not active at the moment. Uh, the crew of the USS Nighthawk has been given the go-ahead to enter the mirror to the mirror universe by engaging its or by misconfiguring its warp field and entering the Bajoran wormhole. Uh, you should expect no interference from the uh, local Vedic assembly. After all, this is not their orb, and they wish to see it delivered to their its proper owners. Uh, the only thing that I require from the commander and the security chief is what, if anything, are you guys doing to protect the, bo the orb from any Bajoran crew member who is looking for an impromptu orb experience? I threaten to give anybody who touches it an impromptu orb experience. Um, I would say we have security on it and in lockdown... Um, I think on the orb. I would say you, you would have security on the orb. Yes. It's kind of small. We have it in a box. Yeah, but it's not a big box. We can't stack all the security on top of it. Maybe one. Yeah. Like Just an egg. One. What well, if you made sure that the, um, that the orb had some glowing lights and it, it currently uh, pulsed different lights to make it more obvious? Uh, good point. You're out of the box could... thinking, out, as it were, Mr. Thashran continues we... to amaze. We could put it in a basket with like little green, glossy, fake grass inside of it, surrounded by other little bitty orbs. Painted different colors, maybe with some candy inside. Okay, we're going meta. Okay, cool. Uh, Can we uh, just have a security team uh, keeping an eye on it so we don't have any problems? That works. We can put it inside the brig. Yeah. Can we use that set piece? <laughs> Show off our new set piece? That would be awesome. Yes. <laughs> I like the way you think, sir. I like the way you think. I'm so glad our GM loaded it up. I mean, just because uh, people have alluded to it, we have a new Brig set piece, courtesy of Falk from DeviantArt. Here it is. It looks very pretty. Uh, the yes. orb is going into one of the secure lockers over here. Yes. Yes, it is. With full-time security on it. Very well. Uh, let's say that it is... Uh, let's put Yaz in. Let's put Yaz in front of security here, shall we? And um, Senior Master Chief Noel watching Yaz. <laughs> two man rule. Yep, two man rule. Neither of them are Jordan. I see nothing wrong with this. Anyways, so the USS Nighthawk is approaching Deep Space Nine. Now, for those unfamiliar with this version of Deep Space Nine, the one that we, the station that we are so oh, so familiar with, sadly blew up um, in the 2380s, thanks to a bit of a terrorist act that is sort of related to the Andorian sec secession of that period. However, being Starfleet, they decided to rebuild it, make it bigger, stronger, more ball-shaped. It is a hub of activity. Uh, the Federation's presence is now extending into worlds within the Gamma Quadrant, and so there is a hubbub of ships out and around. Uh, regardless, uh, the station has picked up a new arrival, and you are being hailed from it. On screen. On screen. Approaching Federation <coughs> Starship, this is Commander O'Brien. Welcome. Welcome to our neck of the woods. I am afraid that we don't have you listed on today's uh, departures or arrivals. Uh, could you please state the nature of your visit? Uh, Commander Brashear, the USS Nighthawk. Uh, we have business on the uh, through the wormhole. Um, security program 4682 43. 
Uh, Starfleet Intelligence. She raises an eyebrow and curses under her breath as she enters it. Oh, bloody, bloody starship. Ah, bloody Starfleet security. At least it's not 31. As she enters the access code. Ah, yes. I have your access code. Your access codes and uh, your destination is OIC. Yeah. Very well. Please give us 20 minutes to ensure that the wormhole is cleared of all traffic before you engage in such risky maneuvers. Thank you, Commander. Uh, we'll be ready when you are. Acknowledged. S safe travels, Nighthawk. We'll see you when you return. I'll be looking forward to a drink at Quarks. And sh uh, Bashir out. And Commander Molly O'Brien terminates the comm. Unbeknownst to you, she is she mutters something about bloody bloody Starfleet intelligence, bloody mirror universes. She have a slight Irish brogue. Slight, bro slightly Irish, slightly uh, Chinese accent. It's a bit weird for me to pull off, and considering how uh, well I did with uh, Australian. Australian last week, I'm not, or last session, I'm not even attempting it. It's an Irish brogue that confuses L's and R's. Yes. And once again, anyone listening to Australia, we apologize for his accent. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, this is going to require a configuration of the warp field, which is going to be an engineering test. Uh, so if Mr. Thashran could please roll me a either control or daring um, plus engineering test, and the ship will assist with engines plus no, uh, yeah, en engines plus engineering. And this is going to be a difficulty okay. two. Correct. And you have no momentum, so feel free to delete that one you have saved over. Hey, critical from the Nighthawk. Yeehaw. She's excited to go through the wormhole. Yes, she is. And that's two more from Bish from uh, Thashran, so you get two momentum. Nice. So, after 20 minutes or so of rigging up the warp field to duplicate the Initial tra in ah, the initial trans transversal into the mirror universe. You are ready to go, and roughly around that time, all the traffic around the wormhole has been cleared. Everyone is giving it at least a 2,000 meter berth. If I may ask, um, our official mission, since the captain is not here and I am in command, are we to deliver the um, orb to the Bajorans on Bajor? Correct. Is that why we're doing this here? Okay. I okay. assumed that was the case, but I wanted to make sure. Nope. Hey, Exo, did you get any word about the mere Bajorans? Are they they're peaceful, relatively peaceful and our universe are they crazy kill people in the mirror universe i think that would be a great role for us that to see if we have any 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 information on the political standings currently of any connection with the mirror universe that would be a good role or, to do or are the prophets the prophets regardless what universe mm. uh so this is going to be a uh reason let's see no insight plus let's roll reason insight eh, insight plus command or insight plus con as you're trying to access records here and the ship okay. will assist with computers plus computers plus command uh this will be a difficulty one I sure don't have any sort of mirror universe history in my uh, focuses. All right, so that is two successes. So that's another one momentum. Uh, now, you guys have a handout, I believe. You should have one anyways that has something about the mirror universe. 
under the handouts, under Canon Mirror Universe. There's so many bloody interpretations of it that I am going with Beta Canon, which is kind of boring, but also kind of makes the most sense. Uh, long story short, Michael Eddington reformed the Galactic Commonwealth and became the first president in 2380. Uh, it is attempting to rebuild itself, but facing a se severe amount of political resistance from its nearby neighbor neighbors. Uh, thus, there are several uh, pocket empires that ex that wish to see the uh, Galactic Federation crumble and return to the old ways. Uh, any and the, what it says about the Bajorans is that. Uh, prox uh, roughly around the time that the Galactic Federation was forming, uh, the Bajorans bucked the Cardassian Klingons or the Cardassian Klingon uh, alliance. And I wouldn't say that they're fully back into the um, peace and love camp, but their society has stabilized into one of neutrality. They don't have any desire to con bring themselves into conflict with anyone at the moment, but they're not keen on seeking alliances either. Okay. I should mention this year, this information is roughly 10 years old. There hasn't been any contact made with the Mirror Universe in at least 10 years. <coughs> Going with active camouflage up. Well, once again, that doesn't do as much good when we're moving. That does oh, the ship it does. It's only the shuttle that's only the shuttle's invisible when it's not moving. Oh, oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Bad yeah. XO. Bad. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. If we're given permission, let's go the wormhole. Okay. Now, if I was a really good GM, I'd have a cool gif of the wormhole opening and you guys traveling through it and all the cavalcade of colors, but I'm not a good GM. So here we are on the other side of the wormhole. Uh, the ship shutters as you enter. Uh, the view screen flashes white and you all feel nauseous as, you're, as the USS Nighthawk... Uh, travels through the wormhole much akin to a uh, streetcar traveling up a very bumpy logging road. Uh, it is not the smoothest ride in the world, but thankfully none of you are uh, going to fall out of your seats or all have to simultaneously shift to the left a certain amount of degrees. I totally just did that, just oh, yeah. so you know. <laughs> I'm not surprised, actually. You really do get into character. Uh, all right. Okay, so you emerge the other side. Uh, there is no, there is no space station. Uh, there is not much of anything at the moment. Um, are you? Yeah. What was I going to say? Oh yes. Uh, were you engaging active camouflage? Correct. Okay, then I need a control engineering, please, from Mr. Thashran. And, and when the... he gets done that, David, I'd like you to scan the area for oh, yes. anything. And um, the ship can please roll me with structure plus security. And I believe this is a difficulty two. Um, actually, I'm going to use momentum for this, just to okay. be sure. Okay, uh, USS Nighthawk okay. made a critical success. Fantastic. Just I like the way this adventure is going. Oh, yeah. And that, that is five <laughs> successes. Okay. So that's uh, three momentum back. I should mention that there's also three Tholian cruisers on the other side of the wormhole. <clears throat> uh, they, as soon as the wormhole opens, closes, and they don't immediately see anything on their sensors, they begin to scan. And not one of them gets the two successes they need to detect your ship. 
So for the moment, you have a few minutes to uh, either skedaddle or figure out what the heck is going on here. Okay, so, David, scan? Yes, please. Ah, yes. Uh, insight science, and the ship will roll with sensor science. Uh, difficulty of two. Got momentum. Two successes, Yay. and what does the ship get? Wow. That's... The, how many critical successes has the Nighthawk gotten already? That's three. Three. I haven't missed one yet. Someone else take over the ship because I'm, I'm due for like no. nothing uh, but failures. Okay, so... The I dice guys to give it to me. Yeah. Okay, so uh, there, there are very trace remains of a uh, station that was roughly the size of the first Deep Space Nine, a.k.a. Terok Nor. But given its dispersal patterns, it has been destroyed uh, a very long time. There are, of course, uh, three Tholian shuttle or three Tholian ships, and before you ask, their quantum signatures do match this universe. Um, what is most this universe? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm surprised. That's uh, all. <laughs> I, I, sh I should say you are in the mirror universe, and the Tholian ships are of the mirror universe. And the uh, long-range sensors are picking up the system of Bajor. Uh, ship traffic is pretty much non-existent. And that could be because there appear the planet of Bajor appears to be engulfed in one of those Tholian web-type things. Uh. All right, let's skedaddle and hide behind Bajor. Can Fade get a a free question? Absolutely, she is the science officer. I guess Fade. What's up? Um, if you can pick up any radio traffic or anything like that for what what's going on. Uh, would radio traffic or would accessing records remotely be better? Well, this is your free question for the scan. Okay, okay. Yeah, so radio traffic then. Okay. Uh, there is a significant amount of radio traffic. Uh, it is all... Spidery. <laughs> no. Well, it is It is indeed all... It seems to be Tholian in... in uh, uh, it's and it's encrypted using a uh, various Tholian encryption patterns. Uh, uh, you're not getting any radio signals at all emanating from Bajor's surface, but that would probably be a side effect of the Tholian web literally draining the power of whatever it encapsulates. All right, who's piloting? Uh, that would be, I believe, it would be Mr. Jeffries. Boy. Son. Jefferson, thank you. That's your brother. <laughs> All right. I would like us to go to the other side of the planet where we are not, why we are cloaked. And Jefferson, take us to the, um far side of Bajor um, as quickly and quietly as possible. Alright. Now if someone could <coughs> please roll me a uh, Mr. Jefferson. Could someone please roll Jefferson and a control plus con? And the ship will assist with engines plus con. And, and whoever's I'm... doing Jefferson, feel free to use some of that momentum. Yes. So that's one success from the Nighthawk. And who's got Jefferson? Did anybody grab him? I uh, haven't grabbed him yet. Okay. 
I mean, if no one wants Jefferson, I will just say that Jefferson doesn't do well. Oh, I, I like I, I just pulled him up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, what was so his it's not really a Tholian's web. It's kind of Tholian's cat's cradle. <laughs> it's oh, okay. My special effects budget is not that of you know Star Trek Discovery or Star Trek Picard. <laughs> Anyways, uh, what does Jefferson roll, please? Uh, what what uh, attribute am I clicking? Control con. Or... One. Control con. That is uh, three successes in total. So that's, I believe, you're now capped out at momentum. This is going to bite us in the ass. I'm not <laughs> yeah. It yeah, this is too good. <laughs> uh, as you near Beijing, I'm gonna. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna start buying stuff with threat soon, just because. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> just, just to equal, equal out the balance of the profits. I don't know. All right. Only when we have to. <laughs> Uh, as you approach Bajor, uh, you've, your sensors are become sharp enough to see what is causing the Tholian web, and it would be a grand total of 15 of their similar size tarantula dreadnought classes, each broadcasting an extremely powerful wave of, I believe it was tachyon particles? I could be wrong, but let's go with tachyon particles for the moment because that sounds cool. Uh, tachyon particles to one another, creating a massive web. There doesn't appear to be any life signs or uh, or facilities of any kind on Bajor, on Bajor's moons, and there are no power signatures coming from Bajor itself. Although your sensors do indicate several uh, uh, several million life forms, mostly Bajoran, but a few Tholian, and. You make your way to the other, the far side of the planet, uh, around one of the moons. Okay. I am so not liking these guys. I was going to say, let's go meet in the conference hall and have a little discussion. Okay in the conference room. Obviously, the captain is here only in spirit only. Okay, acting captain, Mr. Bashir. You have, I believe everyone who's anyone is present. All right. So, our mission is to return this orb to the Bajorans, and, and it looks like we've come to the wrong, right place at the wrong time. Um, I am open to suggestions. Commander Helsing? 15 dreadnoughts, that's out of our weight class right there. Unless we come up with something sneaky, sneaky outside sneaky. of the box. That's what I'm thinking, sneaky, sneaky outside of the box. With our new transporter, we should easily be able to beam down to the planet. Um, uh, but without... It, that would it, it would be rough with that. Go ahead, give it. But we're putting the, stone, the orb in, on Beige or itself right now when it, it's encapsulated in their webs. Is that a good could we pick up what are they looking for something are they looking for the other orb stones or looking for this one in particular Is no what they they, they they could live here for all we know <laughs> yeah, i think they might be working together with the tholians on our side this is the mirror universe the tholians could be the nicest people in the galaxy <laughs> yeah they just put a web up for for fun. Uh, to keep the Bajorans out. Yeah. To keep the Bajorans from taking over the over the, all of the universe. Uh, Bates just shaking her head. I don't believe this. 
Well, we didn't get anything out of the, to, their transmissions. We, we need to get more information. Is what we need. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Can we? Can we try to? We can try to contact. Their language shouldn't be any different. We should be able to possibly, if we stay quiet, and possibly get some sort of polarizing array to <laughs> analyze their com traffic to figure out what they're saying and what's going on before we act. And Vid and Tech this here's where some of that outside of the box thinking might come in. They're crystalline beings, correct? Correct. What happens correct. to a crystal? What happens to crystal if you resonate at a certain harmonic? Why are we shattering? Uh, the yeah, are you shattering them? <laughs> it's just a it's a fallback. In but keep keep that in mind. Where if we could come up with some type of frequency that we could get into their system to bounce between all fifteen of the dreadnoughts maybe those cruisers at the, the wormhole kind of like a, a worm that feeds in but it it's resonates the and the... You, you see where I'm going? Uh, yeah I see where you're going I, again I'm not really in the mood to take on all these dreadnoughts um, I'd we like wouldn't to get... let's find out what's going on here oh, um, information is always good yeah um, I want to find out why the Tholians are here and if there's any way we can make contact with the Vedix of this planet. Uh, so, the Shran, is there anything you think you can come up with uh, for a communication device um, or to possibly tap into the Tholian system? Maybe I can mix those two ideas together and see maybe I can tap into a um, harmonic frequency that that will help uh, tap into their comms. I'll get to it. Um, right. Commander, I would like you to work on possibility of an away team, um, but I don't want to act until we know what's going on. So let's get some information. If it scans. <laughs> uh, just as you are about to uh, leave the conference room, uh, Loxley calms the commander and says, Commander, I'm cer pretty sure we have a security breach. Intruders on the bridge. All right, we leave the conference room. <laughs> what's going on? Okay, what's on the... It's just a second while I get the last of the tokens set up. <laughs> All right, I'll lead in. Okay. You emerge from the conference room onto the bridge of the starship. Everyone is just sort of wondering what is going on, but no one's taking any actual action as an... Apparently, Director Chalmers and a Cardassian woman are currently sitting in the captain and commander's chair. Uh, Director Chalmers is not wearing his standard suit and tie. Instead, he's wearing something that looks very similar to a Starfleet uniform. Except, obviously, mirror universe, differences in uniforms, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the Cardassian woman is wearing very simple, simplified uh, Vedic hood and robes of a neutral brown color. Uh, I start to draw on Chalmers because I'll never get this chance to do it again. Right, I'm with you. I mean... <laughs> you can stop me from doing it if you wish, sir. I'm not. <laughs> Go for it. It's... Uh, I think you're in my chair, Mr. Chalmers. Uh, he says, ah, I apologize, Mr. I apologize, Mr. Bashir. Huh. Commander Bashir. Bashir. Any similarities to Captain Bashir of 
about 30-ish years ago. My mother knew him well. Well, at least in, well, maybe your universe. Ours, he was a bit of an asshole. Anyways, I apologize, please. And he, very slowly, both he and the Bajoran woman stand up and motion to the chair. Bajoran or Cardassian? I'm sorry, the Cardassian woman. Cardassian. I'm sorry. Oh. sorry, sorry. Slip yeah. of the tongue. Everybody is tense at the moment, although yep. he doesn't... I he, will... will. Uh, Go on. Go while on, the director, quote, with quotation marks, right. uh, has a sidearm, he is making no uh, move to draw it, and the Cardassian woman appears to be unarmed, although her robes are fairly bulky. Um, and Helsing has got his phaser pointed, yeah. correct? Um, okay. Hands where we can see them, please. They comply. Uh, Miss Vaid and Mr. Helsing, as you guys would be the ones to notice this, uh, you notice that uh, the Cardassian woman has one of those Bajoran religious earrings on her. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, ho. If I may permit myself to introduce myself or if I may Please permit do. my name is Captain Lance Chalmers and I am here with the Bajoran's emissary Ilana Gamor I look over to Helsing his name's Lance <laughs> I didn't hear you, you I don't me. it's like I, I it's a, his name's Lance <laughs> I don't think I ever realized that <laughs> It it makes total sense. Yeah, all right. Anywho, what can I do for you two? Well, it's actually what we are attempting to figure out if how we can help you. You, we saw you come through the wormhole and (laughs) nearly pissed off three Tholian ships. (laughs) Nice job on that front, by the way. Um, and then we, our ship, managed to track you here. Thankfully, the Tholian sensors are, well, not that good compared to ours, so we, you didn't even, heh. Wouldn't they hate themselves if they knew how close you were to their firing marks? Ooh. Anyways. Eh. So you said you had a ship nearby? Yes. Yes, the, the ZFS, uh, what the heck did I call the darn thing? Eh. Ah, yes, the ZSS, the ZSS Safeguard. Why is that not working? So, how did you get on my bridge? Subspace transporters. Beam right, beam through shields like a hot knife through butter. Well, actually, technically like a hot knife through anything, because that doesn't exist. Actually, more impressive how they spotted us. Yeah, exactly. Where we are, um, we're with Memory Omega. Our technology is far superior than any of the others, probably because we've, when he instituted our organization, Mr. Spock, or Emperor Spock, believed that it was imperative that we steal the best bits of technology from across the dimensions. Rather than inventing our own, we stole it, appropriated it, and made it work. And he's... He seems very pleased with himself. Yeah, Helsing will kind of go like, yeah, that make, makes sense. So you refer to the Ambassador Spock. Ambassador? Well, maybe in your universe. In ours, he became the Emperor of the first ever Terran, or non-Terran, to become the Emperor of the Empire. Then he ordered the whole thing dismantled, and we fell soon after. But that was part of his plan. And we are currently arising again as a confederation of more peaceful systems. Well, if you would feel free to accompany me to our conference room, and we'll have a more sociable conversation instead of at gunpoint on my bridge. Believe me, I would like nothing more. He... And... 
I gave you the the eye sign. Do you want me to put it away? Yeah, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> You've got after after our couple years of adventuring. Now I think I've fallen to your. <laughs> I trust your instincts. <laughs> So yes, uh, I will leave Ronnie in charge of the bridge while we have a nice chitty chat. Splendid. After you, emissary. <laughs> Miss Gamore nods silently, and we find. When our... he says emissary, I'll stop and turn around and look, and then it just turn frowning. back. <laughs> Happy. <laughs> Because you know the Cisco. Uh, we are back in the conference room. <laughs> Mr. or Captain Chalmers sits at the one end of the table. Uh, he leans forward and steeples his fingers, while the uh, while Miss Ilana Gamore just sits peacefully, with her arms folded across her lap and her head slightly bowed. All right. Helsing is standing in a position to cover just in case. That's fine. I'm not sitting down either. I am very... I, I'm standing at the end of the table. Uh, Captain Chalmers, please. All right. So, roughly five years... Roughly four or five years ago, the Galactic Federation attempted to negotiate proper peaceful terms with the Tholian Ascendancy. They were rebuked, but that was kind of expected. They were, well, they're angsty, crystalline assholes, if you, do, if you don't mind my saying so. Anyways, but they were, they were interested, they were not interested in expanding beyond their borders, so, you know, well, you know how it goes. If a neighbor isn't being too uppity, don't entangle. Don't poke him with a stick. About three, four. Yeah, he pauses. I'd say about eight months ago. The we are a uh, ah, memory omega's uh, multispectral sensor arrays picked up several explosions within the Tholian Ascendancy's borders. And he pulls up a uh, quick uh, graph or quick chart and slides it your way. Okay. Uh, I'll do that cool discovery thing and put it on the main screen. Yep. You, uh, vidcast it. Um, what you find interesting, Mr. Bashir, and uh, you, Helsing, and the Shran would know this. Uh, I don't think Vade was part of the crew then. Uh, you recognize these as those four the locations of those four gateways that were destroyed when the Tholians attempted to hijack part of the Transwarp hub. Ah! Uh -huh. Anyways, uh, since then, we, the Tholian Ascendancy has been uh, in a bit of a chaos, I must say. There appears to be some sort of internal civil war going on with factions vying for control. Hmm. We can't get actual insight into them, of course, because, well, none of us look like Tholians, and attempts to recruit them have failed instantly. <clears throat> we had some intelligence come out of Bajor, though, that the Tholians were taking their orbs. Not entirely sure why, and then when they took the last of them, they caged the poor people. Early attempts to free them, well, the Galactic Federation attempted, but our forces are no match for that. He points out the window, where coincidentally, one of the Tholian dreadnoughts is just drifting into view. We couldn't do much. So, we, we sat, waited, and observed. And lo and behold, here comes your ship with one of the orbs. He looks at Miss Veyad, actually. At a Bajoran. Interesting glances away, <laughs> but quickly glances at the emissary. And how did you know we had an orb? Yeah. 
our sensors were key, were keen enough to pick up your ship. You'd better and you'd better believe that we know precisely how many life signs are on board, the precise composition of your of your uh, engines, and what you ate for breakfast, Mr. Bashir. I believe it was at least some attempt at an Andorian rice. <clears throat> I knew you should have let me tinker with that that ball. Right. <sighs> yeah. Now, I'm not going to lie. It would have been much easier for us to beam the orb straight onto our ship and find a way to bring it to Bajor ourselves. However, Miss Ginmore here believes that this is a sign of the prophets. To which uh, Emissary Gamor stands up. Yes. Uh, every word she speaks is quiet, measured, but is able, but somehow reverberates around the room as if, just as if she was at a podium speaking out to a lectern of 100 people. I believe that I'm uh, roughly th uh, about three days ago, I received my first vision from the prophets in some years. They told me that help, that it was time to hope again. And if the orb could be reunited with the Vedex on Bajor, I believe that Bajor might be ready to fully rebel and shrug off their oppressors. We will not take kindly to being... We do not wish to be... Ah, we do not wish to suffer under the heels of oppressors any further. For, furthermore, once this happens, this will further solidify the... Uh, uh, once again, restore the faith of the Bajoran people. They're uh, once again accepting the prophets. We will once again be the people that we should have been. We? What do you mean by we? My child, I speak for Bajor. I realize that I am not the Cisco, but the Cisco died before he could take on the role. And so the prophets chose me. A Cardassian. Uh, after everything that happened between the Cardassians and Bajorans? My child, it is not the... It is not what lies outside the skin that makes one a faith that ah, that the prophets realize it is what lies within one's park i sense yours is questioning but is getting stronger <laughs> she's just looking at her just not knowing if she could get mad or not but she gives a look over to commander helsing i need to step away <laughs> Commander, no, please. Uh, I'll step. Or, yeah, I'll and, look uh, at her. It's like, are you all right? I uh, need a moment to think, sir. Dismissed. But I'm going to need your help with this. Yours especially. I understand, sir. I just need to wrap my <clears throat> head around what's going on. Dismissed. <laughs> well, that veil heads out. Emissary Gamora looks confused at everything that's happened. <laughs> she and Chalmers trade a look. Commander, I must say that I, I am aware a little bit of what the Bajorans went through in your universe. I must admit that a similar. Well, I must admit that I was part of a similar occupation. However, rest assured that I never took part in the... I was never part of the violent alliance bet bet that existed between the Bajorans, the Cardassians, and the Klingons. In fact, it was my original mission to kill in the Intendant. Sadly, the Klingons did it first. She shrugs. And 
I was... F I think I'm glad that it did, that it happened that way. So is this Bajor a mix of Bajoran, Bajoran, and Cardassian? There are definitely a high number of half Bajoran, half Cardassians that live among the people. Their life is second class compared to Bajoran, or pure blood Bajorans, as they call themselves. I think that's why the prophets chose me, so that I could ensure that these, that I could ex act as a beacon to both. Well, you know that we have an orb, and you know we here came from another universe to deliver this orb. What do you want from us? Well, uh, Miss Chalmers. Uh, and this is yeah. This is to either one. Yeah. I'm not, not. I'm not specifically <laughs> eagling her out. This is like Chalmers leans forward. I'm not going to lie, Captain, or not going to lie, Commander. This is a weird one for us. We're used not used to working with agents of other universes to achieve our goals, but. It is the will of the prophets, he says, with a slight roll in his eyes. Gamora sees that and smirks ever so slightly. We believe. We've been we've been here long enough to observe the dreadnoughts orbiting this creating this web. We believe that it, we believe that this one and he pulls open a he yeah, he pulls out a small watch based widget. Um, pushes some buttons on it and hijacks your video display. It shows a, it now shows a holographic picture of Bajor, with the uh, fifteen dreadnoughts encircling it. We believe that if we can knock out both uh, or these two dreadnoughts, then we should be able to get an insertion team on the ground and deliver the orb. Once that happens. Miss Gamore, well, Miss Gamore on the surface, well, that's where we leave her to incite a riot. And he grins, which is very weird, because I don't think you've ever seen uh, Director Chalmers grin, ever. Mm -hmm. That's our is it like a, Is it like a snake grin? It's more... I have this more jokery kind of thing in my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> However you wish it to be, that is what is on his face. <laughs> the inner the mind. <clears throat> mind you, I, I, since the picture you use, I keep waiting for him to demand pictures of Spider-Man on his <laughs> desk by one. <laughs> so... <laughs> Actually, no, this is, um, a, this is a Red Alert 3 picture, I think, so he'll be demanding the oh. decimation of the Soviet Union or something like that. Ah, uh, gotcha. But, anyways. Anywho, yes. Um, all right. So, again, what do you want from us? We need firepower. I can understand that. Do you have firepower? Because I, just, I think we might be able to hurt or possibly do some damage, but... We ain't going to be able to stand up to these 15 dreadnoughts. We don't need to stand up to them. Their weakness is that they have grown cocky. In order to maintain this web, all 15 dreadnoughts have to stay stationary around the planet. And, as you have probably seen, they don't have any support ships other than the three guarding the wormhole. And those three w can't be here for... cannot respond within... Ah, cannot respond to... Or, uh, sorry, let me start again. The three cruisers who are blockading the wormhole will take at least two hours to respond to any threat that Bajor poses. That means if we can disable the Tholian's, a Tholian ship, the part of the web will cease to exist for a period of time. After that, we deposit an, a, a group on the surface to guard Miss Gilmore's safety, get her to a temple, and after that, it's in the hands of the prophets.
Commander, what do you think of this theory? <laughs> it's still 15 dreadnoughts. That's what I'm thinking. How many ships do you have? Just your super advanced know where we are and what we're eating for breakfast ship? Well, yes. it's, it, it's not really 15 dreadnoughts. It's 15 total, but they can't bring the firepower of all 15 to bear on us on a single they point at one move. time. If they're going to keep... Well, how many are in any... In, in, a, in a, a sector that could respond to any action at one at one point. I probably didn't say that right, but if You're we asking, attack one of them, how many more can get to us within you know, that's what he's, a he's couple rounds of combat? Three. Field of fire? Right. He shrugs. At best, we only have to contend with two of them. Thank you. You can thank uh, Bajor's... Uh, you can thank the curvature of Bajor and its atmosphere for that. And if we get close enough to one of them, well, we won't have we wouldn't have to deal with the firepower of any of the others. So it's a lot more doable. It is. So your emperor that created your foundation based off of Stealing other technology from other dimensions? That was part of his plan, but yes, Emperor Spock. The Spock I've read about was a great man, very peace-loving. That seems very... I don't know what the word I'm trying to think of. Taking weapon... Preposterous? Weapon... Yes. <laughs> I, I've never read into any group in our history that would try something so illogical. Commander, I will be sh I can pass along a treatise of uh, Mr. Spock's manifesto for leisurely reading once this is all said and done. But suffice it to say, uh, your or this Spock, or Emperor Spock, took his uh, change, had a change of heart after meeting your Captain Kirk. It shook him to the, shook him to his core, and as such, and so he decided that, or he decided that he wanted the Imperium to look to be a more peaceful and open-minded. Uh, empire. However, that was impossible with the current state of affairs. So, he orchestrated its downfall and imparted its future to a group of secretive individuals to operate from the shadows so that when whichever group took down the, um, the Terran Empire, itself was wavering we would be able to launch our we would be able to propel ourselves into a position of power and rebuild as a feder as a federation and so the galactic commonwealth was born under president michael eddington and thanks to our unique methods of technology acquisition we had the uh, communication defense and offense technologies necessary to ensure that when the time was right we could strike one totally out of character eddington was the guy that was the uh security officer on ds9 that yeah. turned maquis right that's okay. right yeah. I, I, that's what i thought i was just like i i knew that name was <laughs> bugging me okay second of all um mr chalmers i uh have slight proposition for you. Uh, we hey. will help you in this. I would like, we ourselves are at a current war with the Tholians and their allies. The fact that as soon as our best cloaking technology 
uh, you recognized us, tracked us, scanned us, and ended up in my chair. I would be slightly interested in this technology and advancement for my own chip. You want a you want a multi spec you want a ah, you are asking for a multi chroniton spectral waveform sensor analysis analyzer. I am fascinating. Or at least, or at least, say the. I look at Shran and like the blueprints to some of this technology. You see, Fisheran's face is light up. Mm-hmm, I bet it would. <laughs> his little antenna cloaking. just like his little antenna all like bing. <laughs> and any type of cloaking thing, because I don't. We couldn't spot your ship. Yeah, I'm like I said, I'm intrigued, and this would help us tremendously. And if we help you free Bajor, I think it's a fair trade. Very. He paused. Very well. I'm not entirely certain I'm authorized to give you our mobile sensor arrays. However, what I can, what I am authorized to offer is uh, sen- the sensor arrays for covert sensor platforms. Not as tiny or portable as a ship-based analyzer. However, you put one of these on, say. Are the Romulans a thing in your universe? Correct. Yeah, put one of them on the Romulans' borders and you'll see halfway to Kronos. <laughs> okay. I think that sounds fair. Commander Helsing, do you agree? Aye. Very well. Uh, he reaches into one of his pockets and pulls out a... Uh, an earpiece, not unlike an i one of those uh, i Apple iPods, iPod, yep. no, earpod, whatever they're called. Um, he he flicks it over to uh, Mr. Helsing. Quantum linked communication device, completely unhackable, and un uh, <laughs> you. And will pass through whatever interference might be given by the web. Of course, you need the other end for it to work. He pulls out the other one and tosses it to the Commander Bashir. Untraceable as well? Correct. They... They have a sh- ah, they have a finite lifespan until the quantum until the particles become uh, delinked. That one's fairly fresh. Should last you at least twelve for the next twelve hours. All right. Do you have a time period when you would like us to do this? Hmm. Yes. Uh, he looks at the emissary who just nods. 20 minutes. Uh, we, we will be ready in about approximately 20 minutes, if you will, Captain, or Commander. Where is your Captain? Don't these Starfleet ships have a com- Captain? Uh, he is actually currently in a council of war against our own version of the Tholians, what is called the Typhon Pact. Hmm. I rattle off all the names of the species. <laughs> well, that sounds du- that sounds devious. Ah, it's not a happy situation, especially after the Borg and the Dominion and the Borg. (laughs) Because they technically have never run across the Borg in the Mirror Universe yet, because the Q never interfered, right? Mm. If I remember right. Uh, There's conflicting things on that front, but for the moment I am saying that they don't. (laughs) Yeah, because Q never interfered, so they never got their attention, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So 20 minutes, hey? All right. Mm -hmm. Um, Emissary, why my crew needs to prepare. Um, I need to go speak to my lieutenant. Um, Commander Helsing, uh, would you take the emissary to the orb and... 
take care of that situation. Hi, sir. Okay. Emissary? Thank you. As... Do you want us to wait for Vade to come with, lo come with us as well, sir? Or... Well, I was going to talk to her first real quick for uh, make sure she's all right and can handle Emissary, it. Emissary, have you ever seen a, a Scryer class intelligence vessel? I'm not familiar with this particular class of vessel. It's likely it doesn't exist in this universe. Let me walk you around. I and hopefully I'll activate crouching tiger hidden dragon. <laughs> exactly. That's my boy. <laughs> okay, so you're off to see Vaed. Um, I am going to go see Vaed. Uh, Thashran, what are you up to? Uh, I'll still look into countermeasures, um, I guess. Okay. Cool. So He's still thinking about the blueprints I'm getting him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And while everyone's leaving, the Captain Chalmers is just going to look at Koax, go, okay. Oh! <laughs> uh, safeguard, I'm ready to come home. And with that, he vanishes. Okay, so kind of like that. And it, I kind of don't like. That. Uh, sorry, what was that? What about that? I kind of like that, but I kind of don't like that. Hmm. Yeah, it sort of looks like he is sort of stepping through a door, except the other side of the door, he's just invisible, as it sort of sweeps across him without leaving any energy trace. Uh, any sound to go with it? It's just like a. <laughs> sound yeah there would be really imagine really cool like sound effects and visual effects that's yeah. what's happening right now <laughs> yeah uh when, whoever i get for another player is, needs to be a sound engineer that way you can <laughs> sound stuff for free anyways uh in the ready i suspect this conversation is best held in the ready room yeah absolutely uh okay uh, I was thinking, I didn't know if, yeah, because if she went to her quarters to get whatever, or... Oh, yeah. Where would I wasn't... be, by chance? Yeah, where would Vaya be? Where would you want to go, hon? Pro probably, uh... Meditating the bar. Her quarters, <laughs> okay. but, like... So we'll be in the bar. Or not in the bar, we'll be at... <laughs> no, it's my fault, sorry. <laughs> we'll be in the quarters. That's where I do most of my meditating. <laughs> well, there's definitely, uh... Other, I'm not going to go there. Okay, so. Yeah, no, uh, Vid, you are. Well, kindly describe what you're doing in your quarters. Initially, she was looking up information or what she could of the situation at hand on, in the mirror universe, and then she gave up on it out of frustration and started to meditate to calm herself down, knowing she would have to confront this emissary who was a Cardassian once more and help them. There's just a bunch of confusion she's going through right now. Either to help or hinder said confusion, there is a chime at your door. <laughs> she, she pauses and breathes. Come in. <laughs> yeah, knock, knock. Uh, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. She she gets up. It's like, yes, sir. I'm sorry. No formality. <laughs> Are you all right? Uh, to put it... Uh... <laughs> No, no, I am not. <laughs> uh, but I will do my best for the sake of Bajor. Well, I mean, we don't have a lot of information what happened. Uh, and I can't imagine what you're going through <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I did a little research and my people were one of the first conquered and brought into the Federal er, Empire. <laughs> so, I don't know. Um, mo most of mine were wiped out. 
uh, there's very few Andorians in this galaxy. Uh, like in ours, we were wiped out by a disease. This we were slaughtered. Um, I know that's not helpful, and I know this has got to be very awkward. That the most highest of your religious order is one of your greatest enemies, but this isn't our universe, and things are not the same. Um, I have agreed to help them return this orb to Bajor and follow through. Um, I've also uh, managed to get us maybe a little technology out of it to help us with our own problems with the Tholians and the Typhon Pact. Hopefully it'll be a fair trade. Um, we are going to help. We're going to attack two of the uh, Tholian Dreadnoughts to take out the web to send a party down to Bajor to return the orb to the temple. Um, I would be wonderful if you would be part of this. But I also understand of your emotional and spiritual needs if you feel that you have to step away. I will be a party of this mission. Because if we, if Commander Helsing does go down with them to help, uh, I would like you to go with them. Um, but like I said, if at any point you don't feel you can handle it, please let me know. Yes, sir. Um, they are, Commander Helsing is currently taking the emissary to the science lab to collect the orb. Um, I don't know if you would like to go with them or if you would like to return to the bridge. If I can meet up with them, I will. I've... All right. Just Feel free. One question, sir. Yes, Lieutenant. Are we absolutely sure this is not a ploy to actually get a hold of the orb? And like, not uh, true. True to get a hold of the orb is the goal, but not to give it to Beige. Like for their own gain. A Cardassian ploy. Yes. I can't so. tell you. I believe her. I mean, I don't like Chalmers of this universe, and I'm pretty not a big fan of the one from that this universe. <laughs> so, I have my my own personal grudges against this, but she has done nothing or said anything that seemed to be out of character for a Vedic, and we are returning it to the temple. I guess that's kind of one of the reasons why, if we go down with them... I would like you to be part of it because you know more about this than I would. If it's something off, you know, you know, Commander Helsing won't allow things to go the wrong way. <laughs> Understood. I will go ahead right. and meet them then. Okay. And I'm going to get the crew ready for battle. All right. I think we lost the GM. Nope, I'm here. I was okay. just I was muted as I was busy fumbling around my desk for something. Okay. And I did not want to take away from uh, good character building. <laughs> okay, so we are going to go to the brig. Where? In the trying to time our arrival with the emissary when um, they had comes walking up. Of course. And then and you see, Emissary, we keep all our hallways trying to look exactly the same to throw off any type of intruder or boarding party so they really won't know where they are at any given moment. That is a most ingenious defense, uh, Mr. Helsing. I am pleased to have seen your very spacious and luxurious ship even by it's, big, it's bigger on the inside than it is on the outside it seems i can see how some would be the case and as you enter both security officers stand at attention 
And mere moments later, uh, Lieutenant Vayed comes through the gate, or comes through the, ah, comes through the door. Lieutenant, glad you could join us. Thank you, Commander. Same, likewise. Oh. And she nods to the emissary. Uh, the emissary res uh, keeps a respectful distance and does a uh, small but sincere small but sincere smile. Uh, closes her eyes and bows her head. Miss Vaid, it's a. I hope that you. I understand if my presence is one of confusion. One thing my commander told me was that this universe was not my own, and I will do my utmost best to treat it as such. I do not know the situation here, and I will give you the benefit of the doubt, but please, this is all for the be for Bajor. For Bajor. We can agree on that. And she makes no move to where the orb is kept, but instead gestures for either Vaid or Mr. Helsing to go pick it up. Or at least to show her. And I'll start walking over to Yaz. Yaz, you kept your eye on that locker the entire time? Well, sir, my attention did deviate when uh, Ensign Zonar decided to make funny faces for a little while, but Yes. All right, open her up. And she, uh, she heads over, where both uh, she and Yas produce physical key chips, insert it into the locker, and pull out a orb box, replicated based on the standards uh, transmitted, or. Transmitted to the Federation from the Vedic Council or from the Vedic Assembly on Prime Universe Bajor. They open it up, and both of them see a, a glowing green light as the orb of clarity shines upon them. They don't seem to be undergoing any for form of exper of orb experience, though. They close the doors, and we'll pass it to you, Mr. Helsing. Well, all right. Now what do we do? Now my, ah. now, now, my child, it is time to, it is time for action. As soon as, uh, Mr. Ah, sorry, uh, Emissary Gamor seems quite pleased. Well, serene is probably the better term for it, as the light hits her face. Now is the time for action. After all, faith is great when it is just words, but faith without action is empty. It is now time to walk the path that the prophets have laid out for us. Your starship has provided the road, and my starship has provided the wagon on which we will travel down. Please keep this... I understand your suspicions, and she looks at Miss Vaid as she says that, and encourage you to main, keep an eye on the orb until it is time for us to make planet fall. You don't have to ask me twice. <laughs> oh, you're very quiet there, uh, Vaid. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. You don't have to ask me twice. She nods. And she looks to Mr. Helsing. Uh, her stance changes, one from serene grace to uh, stern and made of steel. It's a very uh, subtle transformation, but you see her uh, face. Uh, her, you see her facial expression harden. Very well. Will we be traveling down by shuttle or transporter? That energy cage. Well, we have two ways we can do it. One, we can try to cut through the energy cage with a transporter. 
we have means to do that, but it will probably be more difficult. Um, if we go down by ship, we'll have to do the attack on one of the dreadnoughts to try to get it to weaken the, the net, correct? Correct. Apparently, whatever this Tholian energy web is, it pr blocks out subspace transporters too. Otherwise, that would have been far easier. Now, our transporters, the the advanced ones, do those operate on this as a subspace transporter? No, they don't. So we, we theoretically can still transport through. Uh, yes, you, you could, but the Tholians would add a two uh, difficulty increase instead of this one. Just and to, yeah, would be um, instead of the, the basic one. And would it be detectable? Uh, what do you mean by detectable? Oh, like your transporter, like where you're going, where? Um... Exactly. Would it trip some something that you know, barring a complication, of course. I as a G. Uh, tell you what, uh, spend that one momentum, and I will tell you. Spend a momentum to ask a question, and I'll tell you the answer. Uh, we'll spend the momentum. All right. Uh, Tholian sensors, uh, transporter technology is, for the most part, standard on, on most species in this part of the universe, or part of the galaxy, which is technically part of the universe. Anyways, uh, short answer is most likely detectable. Uh, especially on Bajor, which currently has no energy signatures at all, uh, your uh, your energy trans your the energy from a transporter beam would stick out like a sore thumb, like a lit match in a uh, in pitch blackness. Got it. So not good. All right. Get the feeling we're going to have to be taking a shuttle down. Well, Mr. Helsing, it's a good thing that I have a very stern stomach. Yeah, that that's good because it'll probably be Miss Jackson doing the flying. Surely it won't be that bad. We'll all need strong stomachs. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Commander said he was BRB. Are you back, Bashir? He is not. But it sounds like this is a good time to take a break anyways. So let's be back at quarter past, or no, let's be back at half past the hour. So roughly 14 minutes or so. Can do. All right. And we are back. Uh, so, just before coming back from break, uh, the captain, or acting captain, uh, had requested a particularly sm uh, small scene. So, uh, take it away, Commander Bashir. What was right. it that you'd um, like to ask? I would like to go to the captain's ready room in private okay. and uh, use the, com uh, the communication device that he gave us to contact... Um, <laughs> Lance, and um, basically, I would like to request some information on this universe. Um, possibly, like some information. What I would, what I'd like is um, basically like a small data dump of information on, say, the Obsidian Order, things that like the Vedix assembly and i'm be very curious and doing some looking up of a certain commander helsing a captain sangrel <laughs> basically the see what our doubles or if there is an iss nighthawk uh anything like that i just thought of my own curiosity's sake in character that i would be interested in uh getting any information of our duplicates okay um i am i'm only be out of game i'm only beginning to 
sort of cement what the USS Nighthawk crew is doing in this universe. So okay, let's, fair enough. let's say that you get it and are pleasantly surprised, slash slightly okay. skeptical at its uh, information, but uh, you are able t- to uh, get as much information as he's able to download within the 20 minutes preparation time. That's fine. I just was basically being nosy. I fine. wanted to see what our Dubles kids were doing at this time. <laughs> you and me both, man. You and me both. We'll, f- we'll All find right, out go, on go, a go, future go. episode of USS uh, Nighthawk. Coming soon. <laughs> uh, anyways, so... All right, let's go to war. Okay. So, back on the bridge, you step out. And, Mr. Helsing, are you here, or will you be waiting in the shuttle bay with the away slash assault? That's, that's a good question for you and Vaid. Are you guys waiting here to assist with the initial strike, or will you be heading to waiting with the shuttle? Um, Kev, recommendation is that as soon as we start to engage, we slip out almost immediately. And make a break. That way, as soon as it, you can have your security. I would say go ahead, have your security team ready, and be be in the shuttle bay and ready to go, both of you. Roger. And I say, watch this up here. Up here, she can handle the please. Yeah, attack. Okay, so we'll have Miss Ved and Mister Helsing will be doing that. And uh, we will have Loxley, and who is going to be the stand-in science officer for any sciencey stuff? Me. Uh, I'm looking. I'm looking. Uh, who haven't we used at all? I think I've only used Skellic once. Let's use Skellic. Okay. Science. Skellic? Oh yeah, looks like we really haven't used her because I haven't bothered updating her token. Ah. Okay. Okay. We can use... Uh, I was going to say if you... Okay, either way. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm good. That yep. works for me. <laughs> Alright. So this would probably count as an activation for her. So feel free to activate her and Abrel as necessary. And we are going to cut to... Uh, where is it? Here. The battle map. <clears throat> uh, so the ZSS safeguard uh, fly uh, de- literally decloaks as in a proper cloaking device, not your knockoff cloaking cloaking device. Uh, decloaks disturbingly close to you, and you get the text. Or you get a uh, quick ch- communication from uh, Captain Lance Chalmers that his ship is ready to go. They've targeted a specific... a ah, He's targeted the uh, dreadnought that is currently heading over the capital city of Ashala um, as the target that you and the safeguard should be attacking. Alrighty. And we are going to enter combat, which is going to be interesting, because this game is not a big combat game, so feel free to ask questions as necessary. <clears throat> uh, basically, you, are, I believe, are a scale 5 ship. Uh, the safeguard is scale 4, and the tarantula dreadnought is scale 10. I mean, if you can destroy it, that would be fantastic and awesome, but that's not necessarily the goal, but, you know, do what you want. Have you thought about what we're running to once you start shooting, sir? The other ship? (laughs) Because we need to take down two of these things. We only need to take down one. You're just potentially at risk of being shot at by a second. Ah. All right. Thank you, Obi-Wan, with my voice in my head. (laughs) All right, so he's leading this uh, thing. We're standing by for his uh, 
Okay. Uh, Chalmers command. So as soon as he starts firing on the spot, we'll fire on the spot. Okay, so the ZSF's ah, safeguard is going to attempt to maneuver in closer. And we'll see how well that works. Uh, also, this is a scene change, so you lose one momentum. No. Um, and as this is an allied ship, um, I would be the one... Okay, why are things breaking again? I've had a literally a successful roll. Uh, hang on. Oh, I see why. There. Never mind. So... <laughs> um, anyways, uh, as this is an allied ship, I will be rolling the ship macro, and if you want me to add extra dice for it, it will cost you one momentum to do so. So, it is going to attempt to move a bit closer, and it is going to attempt to open fire. Nope. What it's going to do is open fire first, and then attempt to move closer. It's going to launch a photon torpedo, and that is a success. A quantum torpedo, I should say. So that is, I believe, seven challenge dice. No, six. That's only four hits, but two effects, which I believe... You can Sorry? Use one of the momentum... He's one of the momentum to reroll zeros. Sure. Happy to do so. It's not often I get to be on the other side of this. <laughs> yeah, we'll give it to you. Yeah, we'll give it to you. Yeah. This time. This time. Well, that's a more significant... Uh, let's see. So that is enough to breach its resistance and cause some damage. Uh, a series of quantum torpedoes rips out from the safeguards torpedo launchers spearing into the dreadnought, uh, causing a series of explosions along its ventral shielding array. And it is going to move there. I believe that's close enough. So its okay. turn has gone. We will follow suit. Yeah. So, and so how this is going to work, um, I'm trying to remember how ELH ran it, and I think how it works is, yeah, so uh, within each round, uh, every one of you can make an action with either your character or a support character, and once that's done, then we'll, and we'll reset and go again. Uh, the tarantula being a scale 10, hypothetically should take 10 a actions so we'll see how well this works <laughs> okay so we will follow suit and move in and so you are at long it... long range right now so torpedoes would work uh, for long range uh, okay i don't think you have Torque. yeah now did I? I forgot if I gave you guys quantum torpedoes because I was nice or not. But whatever torpedoes you Ship have. Ship only shows photons. Okay. I was going to say, I don't think we ended up. I know that was something that was requested, Helsing. And, uh, but I don't think we ever were got them, I'll okay. be honest. I that, would like to have them currently. Uh, maybe uh, next I I could... uh, arc milestone. Or we could spend momentum and suddenly, whoa, look what we got. <laughs> I'm not quite ready to go that far. So Okay, fair enough. Okay. I throw it out there. So this right, is um, uh, control. Black slow you. Full spread. Control, control security, right? Uh, control security. Ship will assist with weapon security. All right. She'll use one of the momentum for a third die. That's four successes already. Nighthawk is weapons security? I believe that's accurate, yes. Oh, you guys are is there on like a, 
Is there like a barrage or something like that? What's uh, the one yes. where it does? You can do full spread with double. the torpedoes. Which... Full spread. Okay. It gives you a threat. Yes, yes, it does. I forgot to mention that you do give me one threat for firing torpedoes. And I believe you give me an extra threat for going full spread, but you deal a much more damage. Yeah, and so that gives us three I believe that extra is. momentum. Let me look at this. Yes. There's only two. I forgot if it was uh, it, difficulty three. It is a difficulty. Uh, uh, it's a difficulty three to fire torpedoes. Uh, so you get two momentum out of the deal. Two. All right. And that's the wrong core robot. In the ship. Was it five? And we'll use one of those momentum to reroll zeros. Sounds like a good idea. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so uh, roll me one extra challenge dice because the full spread allows uh, an extra challenge dice to the weapon's damage. Ah. And that's a good one. So that's a grand total of uh, three... So Seven. Seven and two effects. Okay. Seven and two effects. Uh, full spread is... Let's see. Uh, so, one or more effects roll tax is Initiate a, an additional hit on a random system. Well, that's fun. So, that is a grand total of... Um, so, you should have a rollable table, or actually a macro, for ship hits, or system hit. Not that it really matters for against NPC ships, it's just fun. Okay. Okay, so roll that two more times, please. Okay. That is a good amount of damage. Cool. Uh, so, uh, also it is a scale 10 ship uh, with decent armor, so other m momentum uses might be to increase your penetration. No, I'll be able to do that. Take another momentum off. All right. Cool, because that's enough to actually cause the breaches you're looking for. <laughs> These are the breaches. You're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, several systems are impacted as the Tholian Dreadnought's uh, pa power begins to flicker. Uh, sadly, the backups backup system comes online fairly quickly afterwards. And it's now its turn. Uh, obviously, it's unable to move as it is the tail end of the th uh, of a web, but it is going to attempt to uh, shoot at the safeguard. Just like that, and then click that. That is not enough to do. Uh, let's see. Nope, two successes for an energy weapon is enough to hit. And let me double check what it can do for damage. I, because it's energy, it's going to be a lot. I have Tholians here somewhere. There we go. Does anybody know where, like, the in the core book where your class abilities are? Um... Like, Oh, like what you can do as a commander? Yeah, I know there's something that yeah. I can do during like this kind of thing. So uh, uh, it's always hidden. It's so what you can do is you can spend a point of determination. Uh, nope, sorry, that's the commanding officer. Your XO. Well, I guess you're commanding. Do you want to be the commanding or the executive? Well. That's, I guess, I mean, technically, I am the commanding officer, so... Uh, so the, the commanding officer may spend their point of determination to grant any other character they can communicate one point of d determination, which does not have to be linked to a value. Oh, so I can spend mine and basically give another person Correct. Uh, determination? Okay. Yep. Uh, executive right. officer, so... Um, so whenever another when other ah, when another character in communication with you spends a point of determination, you may spend three points of momentum to let that character regain that determination immediately. 
Oh, nice. That's Which cool. Actually, that's just a... underplayed ability here. Yeah, uh, that's kind of what I was just thinking too. Was like, this is our first real, real kind of space combat, and I was like, I need to look that up because <laughs> it hasn't come up that often. So, all right, uh, cool. So, uh, the dreadnought <coughs> left, fires a disruption beam at the safeguard. Uh, once you take, let's see, it has vicious one, which <coughs> means that that does a grand total of eleven points of damage. So. The, it will suffer a breach, but will carry on because it is a tough little ship. Okay. Uh, who wants to go next? Uh, so. Uh, so I was going to say, if am I able to um, try to attack something to try to create an advantage? Um, um, absolutely. What sort of advantage are you looking for? Uh, I'd like to try to um, cause interference with their targeting systems, um, perhaps by replacing their displays with our latest uh, dance and music video ah, to uh, um, put a hitch in their targeting. So you're looking for jamming of yeah. something similar to jamming. Okay, uh, let me quickly pull. Oh, up. they'll be jamming. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a, <laughs> yeah, jamming multiple ways. There yes. will be jamming. Uh, let's see. Nope, not there. Not there. Okay, so this is going to be a control plus engineering task, and the ship will assist with communications plus security. And you have to decide whether this is going to be difficulty one, two, or three. Oh, and that, 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 uh, okay. And that's uh, how they get around it. Well, USS. Uh, okay, I'll make it difficulty two, and I'll spend momentum. Okay. Well. Uh, all right, USS Nighthawk got two successes already. And you got another three. So three momentum back to you. Okay. And so the Dreadnought is currently jammed. Uh, so you, uh, so the Nighthawk loses one power. <clears throat> and the Dreadnought is a little bit buggered. So... And the safeguard is going to get closer and is going to attempt to fire. Now, because we're technically still within the same action, things haven't reset, this is going to be a bit more of a difficult test for it to do. So let's see how well this works. Well, that is a critical success for the ship for the crew so the ship does successfully move and it is just close enough for its phase its cannons uh, it unleashes a barrage from its uh, frontal cannons but sadly it's not able to get a connection with it the shots just bounce off the the shots just are ineffective against its thick hull as the safeguard banks and tries and comes around again <coughs> okay dreadnought's turn all right the dreadnought is going to attempt what is it going to attempt it's going to attempt to scan for weakness on the safeguard because it is the closest ship and that is the safeguard I'm rolling not the Tholians but that would be a critical fail anyways uh, so what hap and because I usually have the honor of telling you what happens during a complication this time something happens to the dreadnought on a complication what should that be It explodes? No. <laughs> I do like the way you. Think. I try. Yeah. I I do. Um... His uh. Something to the weapons. What if they? What if they thought they exposed the weakness, but they actually target one of the um, or the strongest, so they actually get like a, a penalty to the next attack or something. 
I want their communi- or, communication system to go down. Or it makes them easier to hit. Yeah. Creates an overload that you know lowers resistance or something like that. Okay. I see my personal vote would be to have communications or something like that with the jamming was like so good that it uh uh that the other ships don't notice that it's being attacked. So we don't have to fight two of these things. <laughs> well, kind of like that. Okay. So a communication its communication systems go completely dead. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Cool. So that's what happens. Okay, that's that guy's turn. Next up is going to be the Nighthawk. Uh. All right. Um, now, can we fire another thing of uh, torpedoes now, or not yet? Uh, um, right. There, you need to do it. Did we well, you can. Do it? It's just an increased uh, difficulty. So common things are you can set an attack pattern or um, do a quick uh, impulse jump move some scan for weakness scan for weakness <laughs> restore power although uh, Thashran sort of done his action already so that sure would be difficult. that's what I was thinking so we still got science and me um, so I would like to actually order to move us closer and um, have the science officer scan for any other weaknesses. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so, so someone could please roll Mr. Jefferson Peppers. and roll me a control plus con. Uh, ship will assist with engines plus con. And for those of you uh, who want to play along at home or in their own homes, uh, Command or attack roll, nah, attack actions during combat typically are on page 221 of the core rulebook. And Jefferson Davis got one success, which is just all that he needs. So, um, if the Shran, you can move your ship somewhere within approximately six hexes. Sure. Uh... I said the shrine again. I meant Bashir. Uh, <laughs> you'd think by this point I could tell two Andorians hey. apart, but apparently not. Nope. nope. Racist. Racist. Oh, or speciesist. <laughs> Blue guys look the same. I mean, you put them in a uh... music group together, really. So you did, you did Bashir can move the ship, right? Did I? Uh, yeah. So Bashir, uh, do you want to move the ship somewhere? Um, this was your idea. Uh, so, yeah. sorry, I was playing along at home and looking up the book in the in the core rule book. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and say, um, I like F twenty four. F twenty four. Okay. That's. About there, I think. There. Cool. Okay. Next up is the safeguard. And it's going to attempt to scan for weaknesses since it's got trying to do this again before combat resets will be very difficult. And let's see. One scan for weaknesses is a critical success so um well you have five momentum you don't need another one i'll save that for my next starship roll uh they are able to successfully scan for weaknesses on the tarantula dreadnought uh so any attack you make um let's see where's the scan for weaknesses thing next attack on this thing gains piercing two And if you purchase any more D20s for that attack roll, it inflicts an additional challenge dice. Say that again? Uh, So 
Um, if you attack the Dreadnought again, um, you gain an additional two piercing for free. And if you buy more um, D20s for moment uh, to for extra attack dice on the roll, then you get an additional one challenge dice. Gotcha, so, gotcha. You know, three challenge dice instead of just the standard two. Ah, sorry. Two. Ah, I'm mixing my words up. Two. You know, the standard two D20. If you purchase a third, you get one challenge dice for damage. Well, anyways, we'll we'll, re- we'll revisit this once you uh, once if you hit. We can shoot again. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. When let's see, safeguard went. Nighthawk did its thing. I believe it is the tarantula dreadnought again. Yeah, probably. Uh, tarantula dreadnought is going to attempt to take its action to repair. Uh, let's see, it's going to attempt to overcome the jamming, uh, which is going to be interesting. And yep, yeah, so it is no longer jammed. So it's it's beaten the jamming, but its communication systems are still down. It will need another action for that. And I believe that the uh, let's see, USS Nighthawk. This will be the last turn, or your last action before this particular combat round ends. Okay, I am going to go with rally. Okay. And that is. Mm-hmm. I love this. Presence. Command. (laughs) Against the zero. Just to get momentum. (laughs) You already have five momentum. Holy moly. But you get the momentum. Um, (laughs) So you have two. So you get the one momentum at six. And you have one floating at the moment. Which I don't know what you can do with that but can i give it to the uh uh safeguard sure all right i'll take it (laughs) all right uh so the safeguard is going to attempt another cannon attack and because you've given me a couple challenge dice for it i think we might be okay we're going to find out uh let's see yes Nice. Two successes, three. Yeah, it hits significantly. And it is going to do a metric ton of damage. Now, is that literally speaking or figuratively speaking? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> uh, so it's. Uh, its uh, cannons are not phaser based, as your sensors tell you. Instead, they're Verteron particles which punch through a weak spot in the shields that they had discovered uh, dealing a grand total of let's see 8 damage plus 3 effects given that they're vicious 2 that bumps that up to 11 and they have piercing 2 so yeah that, uh, sh- that is enough to drop the tarantula's shields completely So the tarantula shields go down completely, at which point the communication, or a quick one-line communication from it says, take down its power supplies. In other words, target. they're asking you to uh, target their engines, which is... Okay, so uh, the Tholians have a... This is the end of your guys' actions, I believe. Um, actually, Can we? Vaid hasn't done anything. Well, Vaid's on a shuttle, I suppose. Did she with me? And um, I gave Loxley quick to action, so can she use that and we go first at the next? I do believe that is quite possible, yes. So you can certainly go first. And she will shoot the phaser array using a spread ah. okay and i will buy an additional dice now 
Are we within what medium range? Uh, let's see, medium range. Yes, you are. Okay. Okay, so yeah, that'll give us phasers, spread at medium range, buying a dice. Okay. Now, are you targeting a system directly, or are you just going to hit where it hits? Now, was that Chalmers telling us to target their engines? Uh, yes. yes. Okay, we'll target. Th- I will do the spread then. I'll do the other. You no, sound well, so pouty about it. Damn it. Well, my, yeah, I, I don't want to. So, yeah. Let's see. Uh, targeting... Versatile. Reversal. So, uh, targeting a specific sensor or a specific uh, subsystem will take an will add to, to the difficulty. So instead of the two successes you need, you'll need three. Um, okay. But I believe it and does the two breaches to that system once you hit. All right, let's do that. It's all the momentum you want. That's why I just did what I did. Yeah, so that'll find me. It's a difficulty three now? Yes, it yes. is. Uh, control security and ship will assist with weapon security. Um... She will pop her value of my crew, my family, mm-hmm. or her determination. Okay. And she'll um, use two momentum to get a third die. Okay. So that's a metric ton of successes. Uh, That is one, two, three, four, five, six successes so far. That is seven. Uh, So the... Okay, so you have six momentum again. Um, Let's see. Sorry, I'm doing math now. So it was three And I used to die. So it was three difficulty, and you got seven successes. Uh, so that would be four momentum, and you've so you're back to you're back up to six. You have two floating momentum, and phasers count have the versatile two quality. So you have four floating momentum to play with. Okay. Um, so seven challenge dice, and because I used I bought a D twenty. Mm-hmm. I get an additional challenge die, so that's, that's eight. Right. That is... Okay. And what... We'll use two of that. Let's see, so we can use bonus damage or penetration. Yeah. Um, uh, one one for uh, penetration to re- reduce resistance by two. So penetration and then, four total. Gotcha. And then a bonus damage. So we'll use that other floating. We had two floating momentum? Uh, yeah, four? four total. Okay, so it was one for penetration. Mm-hmm. And we'll use the other three for bonus damage. Okay, so that's three more challenge dice. So if you could roll me three more. Well, I'm guessing you're not going to want to re-roll those. No. Okay, so that is a grand total of... (coughs) Yeah. Twelve. Twelve damage total. No. Thirteen. Yep, sorry. You're right. 13. GM can't math. I couldn't math. That's why I'm in security. <laughs> One phaser, two phaser, three phaser secure. Okay. It goes off the, goes off and more than my fingers um, have issues. Okay. So that is two breaches to its engine supply. Oy vey. Okay. Okay, so uh, with a flicker, or with a series of explosions around the tail end of the vessel, the ship, or a section of the Tholian web goes down. Yeah. 
And that would be the go signal for That's, the shuttle. That would be a go signal for the shuttle. Now, which shuttle are you taking? And how many of you are coming on board? Um, Helsing and Hanara for sure. Uh, Vaid, the emissary. Okay. Are you taking the Type XX, the Amazon, or the gunship? Um, so what was the difference between the Phantom and the XX? Um, Phantom is a gunship. The XX has the stealth system. Of uh, Phantom, the Spectre is the gunship. Yeah, correct. Phantom. Uh, yeah, the Spectre gunship, the Type XX shuttle, is the one with the stealth system, and the Amazon runabout has the capacity. Well, has a lot of capacity. And versatility. And the Amazon, I think, has two uh, deck plans. That too, yes. Yeah, we can keep... At least when we're not moving, we can hide. So we'll take the Type XX. Okay, take the Type XX. So... Oh, and before I left, if I have to spend a moment on that'll be fine. Mm -hmm. But I want to work with... Um, Commander Thrashron, and inside, I want to create two two boxes. One box I'm going to give to Hanara, okay. and I'll make the, that's the actual orb stone. But we're going to put a disco ball inside. <laughs> you don't have. Um, if I got to spend a momentum, I'll do it. That sounds like you want to create an advantage. So yes, that's going to be two momentum to create the advantage. Um, I'll do it, and I'll take. On and I'll carry the actual orb stone inside a the the real box, I guess, that shields it and everything else. Was that from the floating momentum? Or was that from there? Our our current six. Oh no, he used current six. Yeah, the current six. Okay. The, current the floating six. momentum okay. was used yeah. to blow a hole in the. Uh, yeah. Used to blow up the engines. Yeah, Helsing's becoming a bad influence on on Loxley on it his hatred for the Tholians. <laughs> yeah, seemingly. Okay, so we have Hanara. And we have the Emissary. Do we need an Engineer? Could never go wrong with one, I guess, but that's up to you. Well, yeah, exactly. I, I agree. It's not There's necessarily... One that fits. But... Medical? Right now, we just got Vayed, Hanara. Um, so we'll need, we could take two more. Unless... I'm more protecting everyone than trying, because you're going in straight to a mission to deliver a religious artifact. So I'm more protecting her. And what did we have so another Bajoran? Yeah, I don't know if we did. I don't think you've made any other Bajoran support characters, no. Okay. Yeah, not in security. I'll have to do a Bajoran security person after this. Once we get back to DS9. You realize that alien species aren't like Pokemon. You don't have to have a full diversity in... Gotta catch them all. <laughs> uh, take, take the... Take, take the... All security? <laughs> oh, um, that was right. We want Calyx. Calyx. Oh, yeah, that's right. She's the intelligence officer. Cool. Yeah, and if we need to bring one more, it would probably be um, Senior Chief Noel. Senior Chief Noel. Okay. I guess, yeah, since there's no orb in the cupboard anymore, you don't need two-fact or two-person authentication. Also, yeah, it looks but... like Calyx is Bajoran. Yes. Yes, she is. Oh, Kelly okay, is good. Oh, she is good. And once again, Helsing in his harem. Not counting Hanara, who's male, but... Yeah. But we can't. We never realize that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, he's a cat person, so it could go... You know, not judging. Uh, so, if uh, someone can take uh, Miss Jackson's card, please. Uh, activate her as necessary. And roll me a daring plus con test, please. I'm and on this. If someone can take the Type XX shuttle and uh, roll Engines Con, uh, this is going to be a difficulty two. 
since you're leaving a ship under active fireflight or under active firefight. Okay, I got the XX, XX shuttle. Oh, you got it. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, Juliet. Oh, never mind. Yeah, take his stuff. Yeah, I just rolled. Yeah, no problem. So we're doing daring. You said daring con. con. That's right. Yeah. You got momentum. One momentum, and she is small shuttle. So yes. That's the two you need. Uh, with uh, Miss Jackson's fingers deftly dancing acro across the panels, your shuttle leaves the relative safety of the shuttle bay and is immediately exposed to the void under a intense firefight. Thankfully, uh, you many of the stray energy beams do not seem to threaten the shuttle, but that doesn't stop Miss Jackson from flying an evasive pattern anyways. As the shuttle makes its way down to Bajor's surface. <clears throat> the city of Ashala. Uh, tip on... In the Prime Universe, it is a a very holistic city built uh, not only with functionality but spirituality in mind. Uh, every building has a purpose and the city itself is well maintained. It's not a garish city by any sort of the, by any stretch of the definition. Um, <clears throat> and its population is fairly uh, sizable but well behaved. Not the same cannot be said for this particular city. Um, even though all the lights are off, uh, you can tell that the city has fallen into disrepair. Uh, sections of it have been completely re recovered by nature. And uh, you are getting the sense that the rest has been garrisoned quite heavily. And it is... An, it's about time as Elena... As Elena's shuttle makes its way down, some of the dormant energy signatures that you could not detect from orbit are now going live, which would be more defense guns. So, um, this is so. What I need is whoever is manning the science station, probably Vade. Right. If you could please roll me a uh, insight plus science, uh, and. Miss Jackson, if you could please roll me a daring plus con, and the okay. ship can either assi can assist with one or the other, because uh, it's going to be a difficulty two for either test. So if you want the ship to assist with your roll, Vaid, to find a safe landing ground, that would be sensor science, or if uh, you want the ship to potentially not get shot down, that would be con, or that would be uh, engines plus con. Not like Vid needs it, apparently. That's two successes <laughs> for you. Um, that's only one success for Miss Jackson. So the ship should help her. <laughs> it sounds appropriate. And uh, the ship doesn't help. No. No. Okay. We found the perfect landing spot, but we're heading straight for it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so. Uh, so. Blah. So Vid. Uh, as your fingers dance upon, as your fingers dance around the uh, the sensors control panel, uh, the, you are able to pick up a slight or a protect uh, a potential dead zone in the sh city's uh, garrisons, where you could land without Im coming under immediate fire. The downside is you can't make it there anymore, as the ship can, as the ship will tumble off course and land in an area of town that is, well, on the plus side, it's closer to the temple that you're supposed to bring the orb to. On the downside, well, there's Tholians. So, and you I am... want to face Tholians? <laughs> so I am going to spend uh, two threat uh, to 
put the complication that the ship is damaged upon uh, its very harsh landing and will need to be repaired before it can be before it can successfully take flight again okay so let's get I just need to put people where they need to be and then we can get this party started sounds like you should have taken an idea of you yeah yeah well on the plus side a uh, flight control operator can use their con skill on small craft instead of engineering so that's a plus uh, where's the other two there they are <clears throat> You all managed to land at least relatively safely. Okay, so uh, what is the? I believe Commander Miss. I believe Commander Helsing is in charge here. What are your orders? As several Tholians begin to draw around the shuttle, let me get their tokens out here. Mr. Helsing? Um, Mr. Ray, do we need to do this quietly, or...? I believe the time for silence has passed, and she reaches into her robes and pulls out in, uh, an antique Bajoran uh, solid shot weapon. Ooh. And... I, I Free fire. I should mention, just because I think it's cool, uh, it's a antique Bajoran solid shot shotgun. <laughs> okay. Because I think it's hilarious. All right. Um, the rain. How far away are we from? Um, look, uh, enough, far enough that you can. Right now, you will take. Ah. So for this turn unless you decide to spend an action to actually move towards them as a miner, uh, you will have an increased uh, difficulty to hit. All right, so we're at longer Long range. range. Yes. So it would be three difficulty. Um, I'll go ahead and take the longer shot, use my minor action to charge mm -hmm. for area. Ah. And... We will use one of the momentum for a third die. Go for it. Um, I'm actually going to use... I'm actually going to pop my... Instead of using the third die, I'm going to pop my momentum. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm not my momentum. My determination... Um, what value? Duty before duty before all else. That works. <clears throat> That's two successes automatically. So many button clicks. Uh, I know, right? That is five successes in total. So, so two, two momentum. momentum. Um, I'm going to re-roll a one. Ch I'm going to do one challenge dice real quick mm -hmm. uh, to see if I get my determination back with veteran. Oh, that's right, you have that. No. Nope. If you ask me, veteran happens far too rarely. <laughs> I might have. I might house rule that at some point, but not right now. Anyways. Okay, so we have. Let's see him. Eight with the f okay. Nice. So I'll get effect. four of them. Is that four extra or four total? That's four extra target. So I get a total of five. Mm -hmm. That'll be seven and so we got. 
what was it three extra we had three extra momentum yeah three extra yep. momentum um i'll pop all that momentum in to lower their resistance Ooh. okay so that is you're not, oh, messing not that you, you you can keep those two momentum it was three extra momentum yeah that we th had yeah the three from the roll so yeah So that is a grand total of seven with a piercing of three, was it? I used three momentum, so that's piercing a six. Oh, piercing six. Right oh, right oh, right oh. I think it does two for every momentum. Uh, no, for standard weapon, it is uh, ignore X. I'm I'm only so, seeing it's reduced by one. One. Per... I'm, I'm doing it with. Oh, uh, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. I'm seeing the combat you see right it? here. I see it. Never mind. There. It is. Yep. Yep. We're we're good. I for some reason thought it was different for personnel versus ship, but doesn't seem to be. Okay, so that's a smeg ton of damage, uh, which will be how much stress do these guys have? Should at least be an injury. I'm hoping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it punctures through their spacesuits. Uh, let's say, I'll say these five have been taking some damage. I can't apply an. I don't think I can apply a image to all of them at the same time, which is kind of annoying. Hopefully, one yeah, day they do one, that as a feature. But yeah, you gotta do one by one. Yeah. Do that. Do that. Do that. Do that and do that. <clears throat> There's uh, hisses from their environmental suits from where your phaser penetrates it. Uh, let as the hot gases inside uh, turn to steam upon vaporization. Uh, several t you he um, they come at you silently though. They're not making any word or uh, they barely flinch as they take the damage. Next up is... Um, Helsing will use quick to action. Ah, okay. So somebody else can try to shoot now. Sure. Let's see what we... uh, who, wants to, who wants to fire on the poor helpless Tholians who only want to come and, you know, give you gr uh, greetings? And Space hugs. hugs. Space hugs. <laughs> Bad will shoot or try to shoot. Go for it. <laughs> uh, control. Uh, you're still at long range, so uh, control security. Uh, you need difficulty three to hit. Can now I you, focus you, on a target? Uh, you can do you an can aim. aim. Yeah, aim. Aim is what I mean. Okay. Yep. So aiming will allow you to re-roll one challenge dice. Okay. And it's control. Control security. It's security. It's difficulty three, so you might want to use momentum. Okay. I'm going to use a momentum. Uh, Ooh. Well, that's only one, I'm afraid. I mean, you can, yeah. you know, you can reroll one of those and pray for a critical. <laughs> Afraid not. Ah. Uh, your shot goes wide, I'm afraid, Vade. Next up is one of the Tholians. I might as well add them to turns, even though some of them aren't going to last long. Let's say this one is going to raise its spindly arm. It's holding a pistol that barks forth a a barrage of thermionic energy and he's going to target Mr. Helsing cause well big man on campus security actually I should just be able to do this <clears throat> hmm. 
And you know what? Because I haven't spent any, I'm going to spend... Oh no, I can't spend threat to re-roll the challenge. The actual t attack. Oh well, say la vie. That's his turn. Who's next? Sure. Well, it would be one of you guys. Hanar, Noel, or... Calyx. Somebody who can shoot. Miss Jackson could shoot if she wanted to, or she could take part in trying to repair the shuttle. That's what her plan was, because she actually has on her thing both small craft and shuttle mechanics. So, okay, <laughs> that's so, what I was going to do. You break it, you fix it. Exactly. Okay, uh, so someone with Hanara, or someone with Calyx, someone with Noel. Sure, uh, I've got Calyx. Sure. This would be an activation for her. No, activation for everyone, really. Okay. You can give her a focus on phasers. Okay. That way you'll have a focus. I'll type it in for you. I got it in. Oh my gosh, no! <laughs> oh. Okay. You're not rolling anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You're not having a good time. You're not having a good time. Uh, so... You are the anti-ranker bait. Holy cow. This is not like you. Yeah, so despite... Um, so Calix Zale has spent far too much time in the intelligence office and not so much time on the firing range or practicing weapon maintenance procedure as she goes to fire the phaser and it just fizzles and spits a few sparks before going dead. Calyx, we gotta have a serious talk when we get back to the show. Yes, sir. Remember I'll work on point. this. <laughs> Remember at the beginning when I said it's gonna come bite us in the ass? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. That time. Praise Zinch. Okay. Next up is going to be this trooper. He's, once again, like the others, who they appear to be talking to each other on internal comm sets, because they're an organized truth troop, is going to attack Mr. Helsing. And this time, I'm going to spend some threat to buy a couple extra attack dice. Still, difficulty three to hit. Sigh. One of these days I'll actually hit, but it's not this day. Okay. Yeah, I did, I did dodgeball training before we came down. If you can dodge a phaser, you can dodge a ball. Okay. You know the mantra. Yep. Okay. Uh, we have Hanara, Noel, Gamor. Anybody want to take Noel? If not, I'll take her. I guess that's all yours, Mr. Helsing. Right. She'll do the same thing that um, Helsing did. Okay. Oh, I She'll pop her value. Uh, Dark Angel to the rescue. Okay. <clears throat> well, that's the three successes you need. And um, five, actually. Exactly. Okay, so we some challenge two, dice, please. Two floating. She's only... Nope, she's eight now. Okay, that is... So that was a... It was a spread. Now, hang on. Um, what she... Oh, 
she was charging. She didn't move. Right. Yeah. yeah no. Yeah. Sure. She. She. She did the charge to do the yes. same thing as uh, Helsing did. Yep. My bad. For some reason, I thought she was aiming, but I was just one character behind. Oh. My bad. Okay. <laughs> so six spread. Um. So she could either get. Uh, the two we'll that get, have moved up. We'll get four of the four that we had already. Of the five that have been hit, she'll get four of those? Uh, not possible. Uh, these two have moved forward and are no longer close range with the rest. Ah, uh, gotcha. Um, she'll get the, the last four. Okay. All right, so six. Those were, at, those were at long range, and that's where she was shooting at long range. Righto. Okay. And she'll pump. She only has two momentum. Got to overcome the resistance. Y'all are going to hate me for this, but I'm going to use that momentum to d do the resistance by four okay. total. Okay. So that is a grand so, total of six. six no more momentum. Six damage and yep. res piercing four, correct? Correct. Okay. So these two slump to the ground, and this one, his uh, a seam opens up in its environmental suit, and hot gases e escape, but it continues to be a thing, which just so happens to be its turn. Uh, let's see, and that was Noel doing it, right? Not Hanara. Uh, no. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so it's going to move up. And it is going to attempt to shoot at Miss Noel. And once again, I'm going to uh, take one threat to add an extra challenge dice, because it's now within medium range. Uh, let's see. This one. Oh, come on. Apparently not. Just uh, for funsies, uh, that would have been some nice damage too. Oh well. Say la vie. Okay. Uh, that's all the bad guys' turns. I believe who's left is Hanara Gamor. And Miss Jackson will just do on her own time. So who's got Hanara? I can get an aura. All right. Yeah, good, good, good. Yeah. Uh, so these two down below are close to one another. This one up above is not close, despite moving in. Okay. Are any of them damaged? Oh, yes. Yeah. But, they're all the same. Okay. but they're all the same, right? Yes, they're all the same. Okay. Okay, why don't she just... Uh, why don't she just fire phase with the... Uh, uh, I guess... I just took off the one that's separated. Sure. Uh, they're now in medium range, so it's only a two difficulty. Uh, control security. Okay. And she has focus of um, hand phasers, so... Works for me. Well, that's the two you need. So roll me some challenge dice, please. Okay. And then what's the value for ph uh, phasers again? Uh, it would be... So, so it would be three challenge dice plus challenge dice for your security. Okay. And with your the phaser, you could probably because you didn't move your minor oh, action could have been charged. Oh, that's true. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, yes, yeah, so I'll charge. And... and I think piercing. Okay, you're, you're only shooting on the one, right? Yes, yeah, the one. So yeah, I might as well just do pier yeah piercing. Okay. So seven damage, pierce two. Cool. Works for me. Oh, Pierce 2 is X points for targets total resistance for each effect rolled. So yeah, well, my bad. I keep eight, missing. Eight yeah. piercing? A stupid amount. Well, eight total. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that one goes down. It doesn't even get a chance to retarget its weapon as uh, the the hot yeah, 
as you continue to fire and tear open, yeah, the hot gas continues to expand the tear around its environmental suit, and it goes down like a pot of boi of spo ah, of spilled boiling water. And that is Hanara's turn. Okay, um, seeing that she is well protected, the emissary doesn't see the need to resort to violence at this particular moment. Uh, Miss Jackson, uh, fixing the shuttle is going to be an extended task. Um, this is going to be work track of 15, difficulty of 3, resistance of 2, and magnitude of 2. Uh, so, uh, control engineering, or control engineering slash con, daring engineering slash con, um, Insight science, insight engineering, any of those types of things would be a good one to roll. With a little bit of momentum and a focus. Well, you don't actually both. have momentum. Ah, okay, no momentum. <laughs> you can thank Helsing for that. Took two. Engineer. No momentum. Shuttle mechanic. That is only two successes, I'm afraid. Yeah. Not enough to make any headway. <laughs> well, while they take her safely to the thing, I'll be okay. chopping away at this, apparently. Okay. That's... Okay, next turn, I believe it is now the bad guys go. Our bad guys start, unless anyone happens to have one of those neat abilities where they get to take control of combat again. I'd used quick to action before. I don't know if I can use it again. I think it's one per game. Um, well, it's, but I think it's either once per scene or once per game. Either way, we're still in the same scene. So uh, First round of combat, you and your allies may ignore the normal cost to retain the initiative. Ah, oh, right, because you could do momentum to retain initiative. Right, and, and we don't have any momentum. You don't have any. So that's the trooper's turn. Let's do this, dude. And because I really want to hit something, I'm going to continue to spend threat. Because I want to hit someone. Just once, please. So much hate. Oh well. Is that rolling right for you, too? Nope. Yeah? The profits are with you, it seems. Not with me. Yeah, I mean, no. Not. 16, 18. Well, not with it either. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, well, that's their turn. Who wants to fire next? Oh, Helsing roll. I figured he would. Just put these ones down. Minor action charge. Okay. Spread. Well, there's uh, three successes, so one momentum to you. And we'll use that one momentum to do the resistance thing again. Sure. Do I, is it resistance each time? Uh, you do the attacker see. if you lower it. So, uh, for momentum spend, you get... Uh, ignores two resistance for each momentum spent. If you, I mean, use, for... if you use charge, then you, it gets the piercing two quality. Right. But I mean, before I've used it, that doesn't 
that amount that I lowered it before doesn't carry over anymore. No, it's no, only for that one attack. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, I'll have to spin it for to lower it. Okay. <clears throat> so, eight challenge dice. Okay, that's uh, six, three effect. Now, did you use the charge action before? Yeah, I used the charge to do spread. Awesome. Yeah, that's enough to knock. Uh, actually, let's count. That's close enough where... Let's see. Close. That much before... Nope, that's definitely enough. They both go down. Uh, Phew. They both go down, and these, there is a, a sound begins to uh, penetrate the atmosphere. Um, it sounds a lot like an air siren, an air horn, or an, an air raid siren from the World War II days. Uh, you look out the... Uh, you, ah, you look up at the rain-slicked buildings and see several uh, Bajoran faces peeking out half or peeking out wondering what's going on below uh, several of them immediately see what's going on and duck back uh, some of them take the time to uh, wave or shout a support before closing their uh, windows t and once again going back into hiding Gamor quickly points in the general direction where you can see a ruined uh, a series of ruined spiders, no, spires ruined spires that have been toppled due to some at some past, it looks like they've been well, they were nice at one point, now they're not they've been despired come, she nice. says by spiders yes, <laughs> probably this way, and she begins to lead you through a series of alleyways and now comes the part where you will either where you must move through the city without attracting it much in the way of attention and are you leaving miss jackson behind that's the question i fix the ship well yeah she's got to fix the ship but do you tr it's not like it's like the tholians kind of know that there's there because you know crashed ship they saw it come in. Uh, Mr. Helsing? Lock it up. Come with us. Okay, sir. Worst case, we'll transport out of here. Okay, so this is going to be a difficulty four test to stay hidden. Actually, yeah. nope. I'm going to turn this into an extended task because I think it's funnier. Or I think it's cooler. Uh, so this is going to be a work track 20 test. It's so going to start with a difficulty 4. Um, because you're in enemy territory, the resistance is going to be fairly high. And the magnitude is going to be 3. Uh, so, various things you can do would be to find an ally, which would be a insight plus command, or convince an ally. Um, evade would be either daring or you know evade secured or evade security daring daring security uh, control security just to hide um, some form of engineering task or science task could probably be used to fool sensors you know get creative with it all the security people have infiltration. I'm sure. It would, be good, it would be good for. Yeah, of course they do. I train them well. A Starfleet intelligence ship? <gasps> Infiltration? Hmm. Fancy that. Anyways. Um, out of curiosity, Mr. Helsing, are you still holding the orb? Oh, yes. Okay. In a backpack. Fair enough. And who has the spare? That was Hinara? Mardus. Okay, I'm just going to say that she is holding the fake, and you are holding the real deal. Hanar is male, but identifies as female. I... Cajun's male. I think that way. And preferred pronouns are she and her. Uh, there you go. That way we have solved all the problems for the future. <laughs> uh, 
I just know I'm going to get hate mail for that, but whatever. We'll run with it. Moving on. Uh, so who? Uh, so someone has takes the lead, and one other person can assist. Um, I think we've got a pretty good chance of doing it by the sneaky sneaky. Okay. Uh, but so, it is. Uh, so roll me. It is pretty can... pedestrian. Uh, sorry, I, we talked over each other. I'm sorry. What were you saying? <laughs> it is pretty pedestrian, though. Yes. So, roll me a control security, and one other person can assist. Okay, uh, there's two successes from you. Someone has to roll another two. So, Nara... Nara could probably pop their determination. Yeah, he probably could. Any usage yet? Uh, no, I'm sorry. You can't, I'm sorry, you can't pop determination while assisting. You know, you're right. That's only a main character thing. Or leading character thing. Uh, so who's got Hanara? I think I can uh, do that. Yep. Yeah, I think yeah. you had that before, Thashran. Right. Um, uh, so what's the skill check again? Control security. And if you have infiltration, that would be a good one. Yep, it's infiltration. I'm not surprised. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Not going yeah. to work, I'm afraid. So. <clears throat> There are Tholians hot on your heels. Let's see how well they do. I will spend one threat to give them an extra d20. <clears throat> and they are... Uh, uh, as you uh, duck down the alleyway, um, you see four more Tholian guards coming, <coughs> rushing to where you once were. Uh, one of them pulls out a scanner and points in the direction that you are currently running. So you currently make you currently have made zero progress on the work track, but they're uh, they haven't they're not close enough yet to initiate combat. So you can try to outrun them with daring security. You could try another control security to try to hide. You could try to find an ally. How and you can give me threat to do so if you'd like. That's always an option. GM like threat. How much threat would we have to give you? Uh, one for one threat for one die, two two threat for the second oh. die, three threat for the third gotcha, die. Gotcha, gotcha. So, emissary. How about how about how much threat would we have to give you to create like an advantage? I'm afraid it doesn't work that way. You do need momentum okay. for that. Okay. I just... Emissary, can you help? Is there anybody here that you know? That we can, they can help us out of here. Hmm. Uh, trust. Hmm. I trust in the prophets, and uh, you want her to take the lead. Uh, for the find an ally. Okay, and because she is the emissary of the people, and she is attempting to seek the aid of of Bajorans, she gets one extra <gasps> d20 for free, because that is what she does. And Vade assist and get the same bonuses? I don't think Vade is the emissary, I'm afraid. Oh, okay. She is now. She's the uh, <laughs> She, she is... is now. <laughs> I think no. you have to f find and kill Benjamin Sisko before that title becomes appropriate within the Prime Universe. I mean, that's oh, a cool goodness. character side arc, but... So next session, right? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, so she doesn't do very well, I'm afraid. The prophets are against her. Brave. Um, yeah. Well, she does have a value. Because <coughs> yeah. she's a major NPC, she has values to spend, so I may as well spend them. Uh, yep. Yep. I, uh, do, I do it for Bajor. 
As do we all. Yes. And that's uh, four successes right there. So um, if someone wants to assist and gain a uh, potential p- couple points of momentum. What was the roll? Um, this is going to be uh, insight plus command. Vaid, you want to take that? Uh, my command's kind of weak, but I can. Trust on the I... prophet's child. Say what? I said trust on the prophet's child. <laughs> <sighs> yes, true. Yeah, go ahead and do <laughs> it. Do it. Do it. Do it. And because she's a Bajoran, she has a focus? I will allow a free focus in this case, yes. Oh, well. Um, yeah. Uh, Emissary Gamor uh, just closes her eyes, uh, takes a few, uh, leads you down a series of uh, ah, of crisscrossing alleyways, deftly avoiding any potential pursuers until you come to a storefront. Uh, she raps on the back door. And you are welcomed, or you are at first greeted with a um, an angry Bajoran holding a uh, cutting knife uh, who sees the emissary and immediately prostrates himself before ushering you all in. Uh, you are now hiding inside a store. Uh, so let's roll some challenge dice to see how much work got done. Uh, that would be two plus her command, which is that. Uh, four. She makes four, but it's a resistance of four, so sadly no work gets done. But at least you guys are currently safe. Okay. The... Uh, the Tholians in pursuit, uh, or the ally, uh, the Bajoran male that you find immediately understands your plight, pulls out a small jamming uh, array and motions you all to cluster as close around it as possible because he's not entirely sure how good the batteries are. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like our day's been going. Yeah, I mean, all the good stuff is done. Now it's just, you know... <laughs> So, uh, next, so that is uh, two attempts on the work track. Uh, what do you guys wish to do now? All right, so they're not on our hot on our heels right now. We've got a little bit of time. You have bought some time, yes. And... Do the speaking and moving on then. Okay. Uh, okay. Control. To move closer towards our goal. Okay. Um, Helsing is going to do this. I'm going to challenge one of my values. Ooh, which one are you challenging? Uh, once a Borg, always a Borg. Because it's, the Tholians are taking over that, that hatred. Hmm. realm okay. in, in Helsing. Okay, you've had enough uh, negative experiences with them that I will allow you to challenge it because you've given me a good reason. Um, you'll pick a new one at the end of the session. So you get your determination back and you lose that value. And I'm going to pop that determination. Okay. Right away. So that'll be two dice. You yep. said control secure. Can I give you a threat for uh, two threat for a third die? Absolutely. That's a significant amount of successes. That's two momentum. That is two momentum indeed. Uh, so roll me seven challenge dice, please. Yep, is. Um, who's got Hanara? 
Oh yeah, so yeah, Hanar can assist. Okay. What's the role for Hanar? Uh, control security. Okay. Sneaky like a mountain lion. Let's bring over sheet. <laughs> uh, infiltration count? Absolutely. <laughs> so control security. And that's another two successes. Nice. Okay, we got four momentum now. Thank God. So it looks like the emissary has not only has gained an ally in the profits once again. Amen. Amen, indeed. Okay. So, uh, so roll me seven challenge dice, please. Seven. Okay, so that is six successes. So currently, that would be two on the work track. Um, use two momentum to lower the resistance. Okay. So that would be a full six on the work track that you make. Cool. And that would be a breakthrough. Indeed it is. Okay, so... The work track. Let me just quickly modify the work track. Bring that down to 14. That lowers the difficulty to three. And it's now a magnitude of two. <clears throat> I feel we're getting closer. Yeah. Uh, as you begin to move through the city streets, uh, you um, a heavy sheet of rain, be or the, the rain that was a drizzle, begins to pound mercilessly. While it may be uncomfortable, uh, the water does appear to be... Uh, the water does appear to be, or the heavy water mixed with the chemicals in Bajor's atmosphere appears to be further interfering with their scanners. Next up. <clears throat> All right. Uh, as a, a patrol wanders past and does not seem to take note of your presence as you find shelter underneath an awning of a what appears to have been a theater at one point or another all right okay uh, I'm sorry, do you... sorry. go ahead i uh, just gonna ask the emissary do you feel the direction we're going is is right uh I, it has been some time since I've set foot on Bajor, but I have spent most of my time in the capital. I believe that we are he heading in the right way. All right. All right, everybody, stay grouped. Hanaram, bring up the rear. We'll do it again. But yeah, no. Yes, oh, because I popped a determination. Does my veteran come into play again? Oh, yes, yes, it would. Right. Oops, too many buttons. Too many. <laughs> Veteran, I don't. I believe you needed to roll an effect. Yep, it needs to be an effect. Yeah. So nope, didn't get back. Mm, one of these days it'll work. I don't think it's actually ever worked for you. I've had it a couple times. You have? Okay. I've been more on the not so far. <laughs> yeah, that's that's odds for you. All right. Command security. Or control security. Okay. One more go. And I'll use one of the uh, momentums. Okay. Hey. Ooh. Okay. Um, so someone can assist. Yeah. So Hunter will assist. Yeah. All right. That's the three success. That's the three successes you need, which is a good thing. So roll me some challenge dice, please, Helsing. Uh, seven of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, mm. 
and resistance is four. That's right. You currently only have, uh, so that would currently be two. What do you guys think? Reroll the zeros or resistance? Zeros. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. So we'll burn that last one, reroll three dice. Okay. Not the best reroll in the world. That is seven. So resistance of four still in play. So you knock off another three. But the difficulty and the magnitude do not change. The Tholians have begun, or there is the telltale hum of flyers that begin to go live in the outskirts of the city. Uh, base rumble as they begin to fly over, trying to find you. Uh, large spotlights begin to trawl the uh, causeways and the highways. And that's the complication. Hanar, do you feel the orb is getting heavier that they're coming tracking the orb? It feels like it, but I, I can't tell if that's just my imagination, sir, or if it physically actually is. Yeah, I got the same feeling. All right. Sir, even I feel that we're almost there. We are getting closer. We must... I, I suggest that we make a run for it. We will find shelter within the temple's walls. All right. And that would be a Same deal as daring security. Well, daring? daring security if you want to make a flat run of it. And get there... So a, a successful daring security will knock two, will knock two work track off of it, or control you'll or you'll need to do two control security, to get there, more cautiously. And here's the beauty of it, for both an R and Helsing, it's going to be the same role. Yeah. So daring security. Okay. Let's go for it. Here we go. Apparently I went Mario. Cool. Mm -hmm. Can I have one threat for an extra die? Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. And that's the three successes you need. Phew. Uh, roll me seven challenge dice, please. Sure, seven? Uh, it's two plus... F oh, yeah, two plus five. <laughs> Boy, God almighty, we just made it. Uh, you, did, you barely made it. Uh, you did not beat the challenge, though, so... Oops, we got the... Do I need to... No, we don't have anything on resistance yet. Yeah, no. That's okay. Uh, you've done as many work tracks as was possible, and whether or not you beat the challenge or not depends on what happens next. So, uh, the lot of you flat make a flat dash to the temple. Uh, a massive but somewhat ruined structure, well, dilapidated might be the better way. On the outside, it appears to be poorly maintained. doesn't look like anyone's touched it in several years. Uh, however, inside, uh, as soon as you breach the inside, uh, you find that it is very meticulously maintained. Not a spot of dust or a religious post out of place. Um, the temple the local Vedics have done a great job of maintaining a, a secret presence. You are greeted with two by two Vedics with shotguns. Uh, Emissary Gamor takes two steps forward, uh, uncloaks herself, and both Vedics immediately bow. I take it we're here. We, ha we are indeed. Vedix, I apologize in the manner of my arrival. I would recommend that we set up a defensive perimeter. Please gather as many faithful as possible to hear, my, hear me speak. <clears throat> and the two Vedics immediately bustle off as several other, for lack of a better term, clergymen or women... Uh, begin to appear. Uh, men, women, children of all ages and genders 
uh, find their way out of their the temple's cavernous interior. Many of them look, appear fairly disheveled. Uh, some of them appear quite malnourished, but they all seem to have a sense of zealotry in their eye. Uh, she, uh, Gamor, uh, takes a, or lowers her weapon, sheaths it in beneath her uh, flowing robes, and turns to Helsing. Uh, my ch commander Helsing, if I could please have the orb. Yes, ma'am. And I pull it out of my pack. She smiles. And as she turns to the masses assemble assembling behind you, and she opens it for all to see. There is an audible gasp that ripples throughout as the entire chamber is filled with a greenish light. Uh, she closes it uh, just as quickly and moves off to a lectern or a podium in the f uh, far end of the room. Um, up above, um, <laughs> uh, as the away team is busy doing their thing down below, uh, come on, we're going to cut quickly back to the sky, where the tarantula dreadnought is still, <coughs> uh, it's still holding on to dear life and is still very much committed to attempting to kill someone. Um, the USS Safeguard has made or has told the Night Hawk that its sensor arrays have detected the three uh, Ectomi class cruisers en route from the wormhole, and they will probably be here within the next hour or so. Uh, okay. He suggests that we attempt. Okay. Uh, Commander. We've, we've managed to cripple the spiders. I say we blow their damn heads off. I agree. Splendid. And if... So, uh, USS Nighthawk, what do you want to do? I said we finish the fight and take out this dreadnought. All right. Fire. Go for it. Uh, who's Who wants to get Loxley? I got a Loxley. All right. Um, we'll do phasers. Okay. We'll set it on a spread. Nice. Um, would you like another threat? Always. Seeing as you used a whole bunch earlier. That's uh, five successes. I said that was worth the threat. Uh, so that is three momentum for you guys. Okay, so seven. Oh, and someone needs to roll the ship, please. I got her up. Weapon security. That would be one more momentum. So four momentum for you guys. And seven. So versatile two is different than okay. Yeah. So versatile versatile two gives you two floating momentum. So you oh, can, we're gonna reroll. Okay. So that's one of the momentum. <clears throat> Good oh. God. The prophets are busy focusing uh, all their attention on the uh, battle on the planet, apparently. So, can't we roll again? Uh, I believe you can. You have. You just. I don't see why not. That's just going to use your other momentum. We have four momentum. Well, you still floating. have one momentum from the floating, from the versatile two quality. Oh, let's go and use that. Okay. So, four days. Well, that's... Oh, mighty. Ooh. Well, that's a grand total of seven. 
six <clears throat> or seven. Or that's a grand total of six. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Not from and then. Now it is scale nine, Lower so it automatically has a resistance of nine plus whatever armor BS the GM decides to have on it. Man, I even think if I add use burn up to everything else, I'll give you six. It's not going to be enough to burn through the resistance. No, probably not. Yeah, I'm not going to not going to waste the momentum. All right, it's a pretty ineffective phaser spread. The cruiser. Now that it doesn't have to worry about maintaining a Tholian's web, uh, it's spun itself so that a functioning portion of its armor and defenses are facing you, and your phaser spread just impacts harmlessly upon it. Uh, the safeguard will get to try to do something cool. I'm going to take one of those momentum. That extra momentum is a critical, so I'm going to be nice and not call that one. <clears throat> so, it manages to strike a blow with its phaser cannon, or with its Verteron cannons. Doing how much damage to the thing? Wrong button. Right button. <laughs> Verteron cannons Ooh. for the freaking win! Uh, so it has Vicious 2, that means 11, 13, 5, yeah, this thing just ro goes in, rakes the darn thing, and it blows up. 13. It does a defiant run. Rem anybody remember oh. the scene from uh, Deep Space Nine Mirror Universe where the ISS defiant goes under the Klingon command ship and just blows the hell out of it. Yep. Yeah. Good Boy. scene. This one seems to think that was a good idea. And it was. It detonates in a massive um, red and green fireball. And the crew of the Nighthawk cheer. I assume. And Moxley says, well, I, I saved it for them to take care of. I was not expecting that many successes. Cool. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> so, down below, back on the planet's surface, there is a... Uh, nope, that's the wormhole. This is a Shala. Uh, as you are gathered in the temple, uh, in the temple, and begin uh, several, ve uh, several, ah, I've lost the ability to speak. Several religious figures have pulled out uh, primitive weapons and have begun setting up uh, fire. Uh, um, have begun setting up cover systems in order to protect against a growing um, army of Tholians that appear to be amassing outside. Uh, not seeming to care about this at the moment, Emissary Gamor uh, takes uh, takes the orb and places it on the uh, pedestal, turns around and begins a very rousing speech. As she Just as she begins to her speech, there is an explosion in the heavens. Those of them, those of you looking up, and see a ma a fairly well. It's not large, or it's not as large an explosion from down here, but it still is noticeable. A massive gout of blue or of red and green flame from the from one of the tarantulas up above, and for the first time in a ver in several months, part of Bajorn's or part of Bajor's sky is uh, unobscured by the crisscrossing of yellow triangles. The as a uh, Gamor quickly uh, continues on her speech about resisting the f resisting the 
uh, resisting the fa those who come representing false gods and reasserting one's faith in the prophets. For the first time in uh, several years, the bells begin to ring. And the sound of bells is quickly picked up throughout the city. And soon you are... You can't even hear her speak as the bells be deafen everything. However, you have larger concerns as more Tholians begin to approach, including uh, two Tholian flyer craft, which I don't have tokens for because that would have made sense to have, but oh well. <clears throat> Let's see, here we go. That's not it, these are them. There's a lot of them, but thankfully you also have NPCs who can assist if this becomes a firefight. Not in, not pictured here are the two are the two flyers who have their disruptor cannons pointed down on the church. I should mention uh, that you do have the quantum communicator that you could talk to Hels or you could talk to the commander unopposed and potentially cooperate or something. Now, are the ones outside, are they far enough away from here where if, let's say, a phaser barrage from the Nighthawk um, going out there? It would be a bit, it would require a bit of precision, but you could certainly call down orbital fire support, which is a phrase that is not used all that often in Star Trek, and it pains me greatly. Yeah. Yes. We're bringing it back. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay. Ambassador, how much longer do you need? Oh, oh. No, sorry. My, my apologies. Oh. Commander, I'm not leaving. Okay. So you have roughly 15, 14, 15 Tholian troopers outside with two flyer craft circling around. Yes, and in here, I have some of the most faithful individuals this side of Vulcan. And, Un and now understood. they have hope. As she, she sort of just gives a, a wide circular motion with her hand to indicate the tolling of bells throughout the city. And it's not long in the distance before you hear the crack of of a solid shot gunfire. All right, there goes one idea I had. We're gonna have innocence or Bajoran troops in the impact area. Well, they not okay. yet. There, it's a massive courtyard, and these. The ones approaching are not uh, drawing immediate fire. Now, if the Nighthawk right. was to, say, use photon torpedoes, that would be a little more indiscriminate. <laughs> well, um, Master Chief, uh, give me your communicator. And I throw her communicator out into the courtyard near the largest collection of Tholian troopers. Okay. Uh, the one who bears the insignia and the array of a commander um, jumps uh, you... scutters back slightly just in, as something lands beneath at his feet he realizes it's not going to explode or go haywire or do something uh, he cautiously picks it up um, I go on the quantum communicator Helsing the Nighthawk 
Yes, Commander. It's going to sound stupid, sir, but I need you to shoot a phaser barrage at the coordinates of um, Senior Chief Knowles' communicator. Tholian's in an open courtyard. Um, friendlies are approaching, and we are held up in a um, a temple exactly so many meters due east. Try not to hit us. All right. I will order her to fire at a precision point targeting that communicator. Okay. Um, so this is going... So unless you want to, you know, spend momentum to generate advantage or whatnot, this is going to be a control security difficulty three. And the ship we will... Spent... If we spent two momentum, will that take care of all the troopers? It's going to take care of all the troopers anyways. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll do the two momentum. Okay. Is that good with you, sir? Yes. We'll use two momentum. Good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so you create Get the advantage. 12, 12.30? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. You do not need all the, to target. All the security people don't have any more determinations. <laughs> uh, the, the Tholian commander attempts to activate the communicator. And uh, you guys here over your um, comm badges, this is the commander of the Tholian Internment Force 94 Beta 3. Please stay here. Oh, crap. <laughs> a massive, you know, you don't really notice how large phaser beams are when you're in space. Because, you know, distances and whatnot. But seeing a ship's uh, phaser array in at point-blank range as a person, you're surprised that Starfleet procedures allow you to fire these things at a planet's surface. As in one fell swoop, uh, two Tholian flyers and 15 Tholians are immediately erased from the equation. Um, Vaid, you catch on Helsing's face not really a sadistic smile, but the closest thing to a sadistic smile. <laughs> She's not going to cross you. Then you hear something of, that's for my sister. <laughs> As uh, Gamora finishes her speech roughly the same time that the literal blast from a or as the literal cleansing light strikes forth from above and wipes the Tholians from existence, uh, there is much cheering and applause, naturally. Uh, she turns to all of you, and her eyes lock with uh, Lieutenant Vaid's really quickly. She gives you the one of the warmest smiles you've ever seen come from a Cardassian. And... For the first time ever since seeing her, Vaid, um, there's a... Uh, you get a flash of certainty inside your... Or in the back of your mind that... For the first time, you think that this is going to be okay for Bajor. It's going to be rough, but they'll do. They'll do it. They can take him. Actually not nod her head not, a slight smile starting to form but still still not quite there yet fair enough um, getting there <laughs> and she shouts to uh, Mr. Hels uh, she shouts the way is clear for you to leave Commander Helsing the road the road for us is oh, the road for us is paved it is now our it is now our turn to walk it As you say, but are you sure there's nothing more we can do for you? Last I checked, Commander, uh, there are three more enemy Tholian ships coming into orbit. Uh, there's several other Tholians attempting to make their way to our position. And your flyer is by now probably destroyed. She <coughs> Sorry, or at least impounded I would strongly suggest that you make a hasty retreat we 
And she, as for emphasis, she cocks her shotgun. We have this. As you say, I'm sorry. I am sorry I doubted you earlier. That is doubt is only natural when doubt is only natural when uh, one encounters extraordinary circumstances. All right. Well, we're off. Um, we'll start heading out to the flyer, Lieutenant Jackson, or Lieutenant Vay. Scan ahead. Any Tholians on a route from here to um, the flyer, Lieutenant Jackson? Do you have contact with the flyer and the diagnostics of what needs to be done? If it's still operational, I just need to know that. If it's still there, I need to know that. Uh, Miss Jackson, you lost ca- you lost got connection to the flyer roughly a half hour ago. It's been okay. you things were a little too chaotic for you to bring it up. All right, so is it dead, dead, pieces dead? She looks up, um, and her stoically Vulcan face angles. Sir, it would be illogical for us to check. As she points out to, as the city begins to erupt in gunfire, energy blasts, and the city right. enters under siege, it is... I would strongly recommend that we transport back to the ship and request a replacement type XX shuttle from Zero Station upon our return. Yeah, pretty much what I was thinking too. Um, Helsing and Nighthawk. Come in, Commander. Six to beam up. Six to beam up. And we also see if you can get a lock on the shuttle. And can we use the transporter bays and the shuttle bay to bring it back i you could beam it to the you could beam it to the using the cargo bay transporters sure yeah that's what i was thinking okay so i so beaming you out is no problem at all as the night hawk is not under fire or in any danger at the moment but we will have chief zell roll for to see if she can salvage the shuttle uh so this is going to be (laughs) Uh, so, uh, control. Uh, so, if someone can pick up Chief Zell, please. Uh, control engineering, and sensors engineering from the ship. Difficulty of three. And she has a termination too. She does. And momentum? No. Well, it'd be one or the other. One or the other. Who's got Zell? Well, that's one. Of the... Uh, that can do Zell. Okay, yeah, I might as well use your turret determination then. Sure. Have they already made it on the ship? <laughs> uh, yes, the. Yes, the. Characters have made it on the ship with no problem. And that is there is... any way to contact the or make brief contact with the emiss? Oh, uh, if you... communication. If you want a quick scene with the emissary before you beam out, sure, let's do that. Yeah, it's like just just before they go, I, w- I wanted uh, they, they would have probably admitted it's like may the prophets guide you and those of Bajor. and you, child. Oh, and she <laughs> uh, she brings her uh, hand up and cups your ear, and she nods. Your paw is strong. I sense men, I sense that your road is r- is twisted ahead and your and the futures are uncertain but you have the strength and courage to traverse it I'll do my best <laughs> she smiles and y'all you return y'all retreat Nope. Strategic withdrawal. Back to the transporter room. Attack in the opposite direction. Precisely. Like bravely ran away. <laughs> yep. Brave Sir Robin ran away. Ran away. Uh, Thank you. As you materialize on the transporter, Chief Zell um, qu- communicates to the bridge. Uh, Commander, all, all on board, and I've successfully recovered the 90% of the shuttle's or 90% of the shuttle. It appears one of the nacelles had uh, broken off and 
was outside the outside the beam. Thank you, Chief. Sir. Welcome back. So Good to be back. One final question here. What are you guys going to do against the three Iktomi ships that are coming in? Uh, contact uh, um, Chalmers and... Commander. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's been late. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. Yeah. All right. Yes. Sorry, Commander Chalmers. Uh, uh, do you got this? Uh, we good? Um, We're good. Uh, okay. Thank you for your thank you for your assistance, Nighthawk. Uh, we can we can hold our own against these people. See, so have that information that I requested, and the... <laughs> Captain. While we've been t while we've been fighting your, we've been I've had a. Uh, trickle stream uh, into the into one of your computer's back doors. Uh, scan memory archive 93 beta. That should have everything you need. I appreciate it. Uh, good luck. And to you, Captain. Or to you, Commander. If you see my compatriot, tell him he's an asshole. I should know. I will be I am happy one. to. I'll be happy to. All Lance. Right. <laughs> okay. And as you enter Black Alert and pass under the speeding Iktomi class cruisers, this is, uh, in the background we see the ZSS safeguard uh, beginning a one versus three battle while the tarantula dreadnoughts begin to question why they're still holding orbit if the um, web has been breached. But that is a concern for another day as you reach the wormhole. Uh, with the warp field modification still in place, uh, you enter the wormhole. It is a bumpy ride and you all feel nauseous. And uh, Zell, or not Zell, Vaid, as you, as the ship enters the expanse, uh, you take two steps and find yourself in a field of white. Yeah, you oh. look around. Uh, you see the you see Commander Bashir step forward. She is not of, or she is, she is returning home. Mr. Helsing steps up from behind. Yes. Her mind is, her mind is open to new possibilities. Ah, uh, where is he? There he is. Captain Chalmers, or Director Chalmers, it's very difficult to tell. The Wayfarer may need assistance. Perhaps a guide is in order. The emissary is the last of the figures to emerge from the white, from the uh, fog of white. Uh, she comes disturbingly close, reaches out and cups her hand to your ear. The Wayfarer will do what is needed. The guide is the investigator her eyes uh, narrow as she has found the proper word the investigator as she pauses no the inquisitor must seek out the false operative or the false agents as the other three take a step back and all nod in simultaneous the false agent must be found 
The false agent must be taken down. The false agent must be removed. Or else the temple and all around it shall be poisoned. And in th and you wake up in sick bay. Under a bio bed, where, as f so basically, what the rest of you saw is on your way back to the bridge, Mr. Helsing, uh, Lieutenant Vayed simply just collapsed like a sack of potatoes. Uh, Chief Coox says, um, Vayed, you wake up. Uh, he's running a medical scan over top of you. Commander, I'm finding nothing wrong with her physic. Oh, hello there. Welcome back. Looks like you've had a stressful day. I'd recommend bed rest. <laughs> Wasn't that what I was already doing? <laughs> well, I would prefer you have you take bed rest in your own quarters, uh, Miss Vaid. Uh, he points to the number of injured individuals in sick bay. Uh, as you can see, a battle does cause a few cause bed space here to be at a premium. I'll follow your orders, sir, if the commander will let me. Oh, no, I'm sorry. The commander has nothing to say here. This is a medical matter. Bed rest. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, and he's, he smiles his uh, beta Z smile. His dark eyes... Uh, seem to flash, and for a few seconds you're worried that his uh, telepathicness has somehow interfered in, or somehow picked something up in your mind. But if he if he sees anything, he he doesn't give any hint. As he turns around and admonishes uh, two people for being too close to an open plasma conduit during a firefight. Fade, you okay? That was one heck of a headache, but I think I saw the prophets based on what writings have described, but I saw the emissary, uh, Ch <laughs> Chalmers, I don't know whether it was the captain or... <laughs> And you were there. <laughs> Everybody was there. <laughs> Do we need to tell the captain? What we do, what Go I ahead. do know for sure is that something, somebody, or something needs to be found and either de obtained, detained, taken care of. Something is going to happen. But I, there's a lot I don't know. It was confusing. Yeah, yeah we, well, write it, write it down. When you go to your, your room, write down everything that you can remember. We're speaking in, make a log of it. I'll let the uh, Commander Bashir know. And we'll try to get you to come in and so we can fill him in. We might let higher ups know about this too. So something, there's a threat out there. An agent. An agent. And they mentioned an inquisitor, but I don't know if it was somebody else, me, it was someone. Well, go, go back to your quarters. I'll let, I'll spin the, the XO up. And when you, when you feel rested, you get it kind of piece everything together. We'll have a, we'll put you together and we'll talk about it with XO. Good Sorry. work down on the planet. As hard as it was, I don't know if I could do the same for uh, a Cardassian here uh, in our universe knowing what they've done to my people and others.
but that experience i will admit has helped me open my mind to the possibility that maybe one day i could truly for well, like look past it to go this way tholians there are the same as tholians here so people or people alien or and the different member of different races are the, the same down at the core no matter what universe they're in some good some bad some all bad but she was different well, something about her was just completely different didn't the prophets choose a human with captain cisco to be the emissary Sounds like they pick who they need for at, at the moment to do whatever they need to have done. Seems they gave you some information that you need to figure out what it means. It sounds like there's some hint of threat to it. We need to figure out how big. Agreed. I just hope it's not beige or again. It doesn't, Beijer does seem to be at the center of everything, doesn't it? Unfortunately. And on that note, I believe that's a good place to end it for the night. So, uh, thank you for everyone who, thank you for all players. Thank you to all who listened, or will be watching this later on YouTube. And I, we will be back next week with the next adventure of the USS Nighthawk. So until next time, bye-bye.